All praises to the most high. So tonight's topic is called Counsel for Leaders. Counsel for Leaders. Okay, pay close attention. All right. Uh, let's, let's open up with the book of Romans chapter 15 verse 4. Let's start there. Romans chapter 15 verse 4. The book of Romans chapter 15 verse 4. Come on. For whatsoever things were written of all time were written for our learning. Come on. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So the things that were written of all time were written for us to learn that we may find comfort comfort of this comfort in the scriptures because our comfort is found in the laws of God. The most High God is the one that comforts us. Give me that in 1 Maccabees 12 verse 9. 1 Maccabees chapter 12 verse 9. The scriptures is where we find our comfort. Okay? Read that what you got. First book of Maccabees chapter 12 verse 9. Go ahead. Therefore we also albeit we need none of these things. Uh -huh. So that we have the holy books of scripture in our hands to comfort us. You see that? We have the holy books of scripture in our hands to comfort us. Guess what? The laws of God is what gives us comfort. You understand? Because you might be thinking, when you read the scriptures and you're getting cut, guess what that is? That's comfort of the scriptures. Okay? Whether it's cutting or not, it's comfort of the scriptures. Read again. First book of Maccabees, chapter 12, verse 9. Go ahead. Therefore we also, albeit we need none of these things, mm -hmm. for that we have the holy books of scripture in our hands to comfort us. We have the holy books of scripture in our hands to comfort us. So the laws of God is what gives us comfort. Okay? So tonight's topic, we're going to be going over counsel for leaders. Counsel for leaders. Okay? Watch this. Give me Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. Let's start there. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. The book of Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. Go ahead. Where no counsel is, the people will fall. Mm -hmm. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Read that again. The book of Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. Where no counsel is, the people will fall. Stop right there. Where no counsel is, the people will fall. Because guess what? Where you, when you don't receive counsel, you're going to fall. That's what the Lord is saying. You don't take counsel, you are going to fall. Because the counsel, the counsel is the counsel of the scriptures. Okay? So when you don't want to receive counsel, you're given counsel, you know it, you are the one that's going to fall. Go ahead. The book, of Pro, the book of Proverbs, chapter 11, verse 14. Where no counsel is, the people will fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. In the multitude of counselors, judges, and leaders, there is safety. Because why? They have the Holy Scripture of the Most High God to guide you. You understand? To show you what to do and what not to do. Okay? So this counsel right here is the Scriptures first and foremost and always. Watch this. Give me that in Proverbs chapter 19 verse 20. Proverbs 19 verse 20. Where no counsel is, the people fall. Watch this. Read. The book of Proverbs, chapter 19, verse 20. Come on. Hear counsel and receive instruction. Read. That thou mayest be wise in thy letter end. He says, hear counsel and receive instruction. So the counsel that you, the counsel that the Lord is talking about is the instruction. You understand? He says, hear counsel at the, at the what? You hear counsel at the mouth of the leaders. Is a dear counsel and receive instructions because counsel is instruction. When you hear counsel, you are receiving instruction that thou may be wise in the letter end. Proverbs 12, verse 1. Get that. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 1. The book of Proverbs chapter 12, verse 1. Read. Whoso loveth instruction, loveth knowledge. Stop right there. You see what the you see what the instruction is? The instruction is knowledge, which is counsel. So counsel is instruction. That instruction is the knowledge of the most high God. Read again. The book of Proverbs chapter 12 verse 1. Read. Whoso loveth instruction, loveth knowledge. Mm -hmm. But he that hateth reproof is brutish. But he that hateth reproof is brutish because the instruction is the knowledge that will give you reproof. Correction. Guidance. Okay. Get that in Malachi 2 verse 7. Okay. Let's see what this knowledge is. 
which is the instruction, which is the counsel. Read that, Malachi 2, verse 7. The book of Malachi, chapter 2, verse 7. Go ahead. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, mm -hmm. and they should seek the Lord at his mouth, for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. You see what he's saying? The priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth. So the knowledge is the laws of God. The priest goes into the leaders and all that. That goes into the leaders, the leadership. You understand? And you brothers, you are being raised up to become leaders. Because each and every one of you, you are destined to become leaders. But guess what? It's not going to fall on your lap. You must be taught. You must be raised up. You must be groomed. You must be tutored, according to the scriptures. Okay? So go back to Proverbs 19, verse 20. The book of Proverbs, chapter 19, verse 20. Read. Hear counsel and receive instruction. Come on. That thou mayest be wise in thy later end. You see what he's saying? Hear counsel, which is the laws of God. Receive instruction, which is God's commandment, that thou mayest be wise in thy later end. Because the counsel of the Lord will give you wisdom. The counsel of the Lord is the Lord's instruction, which is his knowledge, which is his laws. Get that in Psalms 19 verse 7. Okay, Psalms 19 verse 7. Get that. The book of Psalms, chapter 19 verse 7. Read. The Lord, the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Come on. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. You see that? The laws of God is perfect. Okay? The laws of God is perfect. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not marry. Thou shalt not covet. Don't hate your brother. Don't have envy. Don't have hatred. You understand? That's a perfect law right there. It says it will convert your soul, your mind, your spirit. The testimony of the Lord is sure. It's 100%. There's nothing missing in the laws of God making wise the simple. So the laws of God will make those that are simple, it will make them wise. Give me that in Sarah chapter 11, verse 15. Okay, Ecclesiastes 11, verse 15. The wisdom of the Lord is what's going to what? Is going to change the simple-minded to be wise. Read what you got. Sarah 11, verse 15. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 11, verse 15. Go ahead. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the Lord. You see that? Hold on. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the law. So the wisdom that you're going to get by keeping God's commandment, the knowledge and the understanding is of the laws of God. You have wisdom in the laws of God. You have knowledge in the laws of God. You have understanding in the laws of God. That's proper content. Go ahead. Love and the way of good works are from him. You see that love, which is keeping of the commandments, and the way of good works are from the most High God. The Lord is the one that does that. The Lord is the one that gives that. Okay? Go back to Psalms 19, verse 7 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. Read. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Come on. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. You see that? The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Because as a nation, we are simple as hell. So the most that God is saying, listen, I'm going to give you a perfect law that is going to change the simple-minded one into what? To become wise. I'm going to make the simple-minded one to be wise, both men and women. But today we're dealing with the man. Give me that in Proverbs chapter 9, verse 4. Read that. The book of Proverbs chapter 9, verse 4. Come on. Whoso is simple, let him turn in heaven. You see that? Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. Hither to what? The laws of God. Come on. As for him that wanted understanding, she said to him. So the him that wanted understanding, the word want means lack. He that lacketh understanding, wisdom saith unto him. Go ahead. Come, eat of my bread. The, the bread is the Bible. The, the, the bread is the scriptures. Come, eat of my bread. Come on. And drink of the wine which I have mingled. You see that? And drink of the wine which I have mingled. This goes into what? This goes into the body of Christ, which represents the laws of God. From Genesis to Revelation, represents the body of Christ. Go ahead. Forsake the foolish and live. Uh -huh. You see that? Forsake the foolish and live. Read. And go in the way of understanding. 
You see that? Go in the way of understanding. Forsake the foolish of our people. Forsake the foolishness of your own doing and live. Keep the commandments and go in the way of understanding. The way of understanding of the what? The scriptures. The holy scriptures that comfort us. Okay? Watch this. Give me Proverbs chapter 10. Read verse 1. The book of Proverbs chapter 10 verse 1. Read. The Proverbs of Solomon. A wise son maketh the glad father. You see that? A wise son maketh the glad father. Because why? This wise son honors his mother and his, his father and his mother. You understand? Go ahead. But a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. You see that a foolish son will stress his mother out because a foolish son is a mama's boy. You understand? So now we understand as you brothers coming into the truth, you want to be leaders. Before you can lead, you must learn how to serve. Before you can lead, you must learn how to serve. You understand? And be, guess what? We are all servants in this truth. But understand, when you come in, don't come in here because you want to be, a, you want come in here because you want to serve. You want to learn how to serve your nation. You understand? To be a steward, to be a servant, understand of the most high God by be, bringing service to your nation. That's why we all in here. Understand that thing. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 9. Okay, Deuteronomy 1, verse 9. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 9. Go ahead. And I speak unto you at that time, say, I am not able to bear you myself alone. Read that again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 9. Read. And I spake unto you at that time, saying, I am not able to bear you myself alone. So this is Moses speaking, okay? He's rehashing the history of what happened in the, in the first four books, okay? So it says, I spake unto you at that time, saying, I'm not able to bear you myself alone. Because this is not the type of work that one man can do alone. Even Christ had the 12 disciples with him. You understand? So that's why a lot of the times when I see you brothers, you, you cannot execute a simple instruction like organizing the feast and all that. You're not ready. You understand? Read again, verse 9. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 9. Read. And I speak unto you at that time, saying, I am not able to bear you myself alone. I am not able to bear you myself alone. Go ahead. The Lord your God has multiplied you. And behold, ye are this day as the stars of heaven for a multitude. You see that? He says, because we may. We are this day. He says, we are this day what? As the stars of heaven for multitude. Because we are many. We cannot be numbered. We cannot be measured. That's how many we be. Okay, go ahead. The Lord God of your fathers make you a thousand times so many more as ye are. Mm -hmm. And bless you as he has promised you. As he has promised us because he made a covenant with our forefathers. You understand? Give me that in Genesis 15 verse 5. Genesis chapter 15 verse 5. Because the Lord made a promise to our forefathers. You understand? The same promise he made to our forefathers. Guess what? He made, he delivered that promise unto us, the children. When we came out of Egypt, and we entered into the Holy Land. Read that. Genesis 15 verse 5. The book of Genesis chapter 15 verse 5. Go ahead. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars. Mm -hmm. Thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. You see that? So shall thy seed be. Who's the seed? The seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The twelve tribes of the nation of Israel. That's who he's talking about. You understand? Because the Most High God, he made sure that promise. Okay? He made sure that promise. Now watch this. Give me the book of Exodus. Okay? Give me Exodus chapter 32. Exodus chapter 32 verse 13. Read that. The book of Exodus chapter 32 verse 13. Read. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou servest by thine own self. And said, said it unto them, Ray? I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven. Come on. And all this land that I have spoken of will I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. You see that the most high God, he accomplished this promise right here. 
He made this promise to our forefathers, and guess what? The Lord, the Most High God, He made it good. He made good on that promise. Watch this. Go back to Deuteronomy chapter one. Deuteronomy chapter one, read verse eleven again. The book of Deuteronomy chapter one, verse eleven. Read. The Lord God of your fathers make you a thousand times so many more as He are, and bless you as He has promised you. Read. How can I myself alone bear your cumbrance? And your burden and your strife. You see what Moses is asking? He says, How can I myself bear your cumbrance and your burden and your strife? Because why? Israel is rebellious. Israel is stubborn. Israel is hard headed and rebellious. You understand? They rebelled against Moses in the wilderness. They rebelled against the Most High God throughout and throughout. That's why we are in captivity this day, because of what? Rebellion against God's law. Understand that. That's always been our signature. From that time unto this day. Read again, verse 12. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 12. Read. How can I myself alone bear your cumbrance and your burden and your strife? So now watch this. Because the reason why Moses is bringing this up, because this is the, the, this is the thing that we were doing in the wilderness against Moses. And we thought we were rebelling against Moses, but we were rebelling against the most High God. Guess what? It was back then, so it is today. You understand? Some of you, you get instruction, you have to be told over and over, but you don't get it done. You know why? Because this is the problem. Cumbrance, you are, you are burdensome, and you cause strife, you cause confusion. Because guess what? Whenever there's confusion, there's a lot of gray areas. And Negroes who hate order and structure, they love that. Whenever there's chaos, you understand confusion? They love that because there's a lot of evil they can get away with. But when there's order, structure, and command, Negroes hate that thing. Because guess what? You are able to see clearly who's about this and who's not. And it's not about big things. It's about small, simple instructions. You cannot execute. Or when you do it, you do it not with a good heart. You're not doing it because you want to do it. Guess what? You, are, you fall under this category right here. Watch this. Give me the book of James 3 verse 14. James 3, verse 14. Okay, come on. The book of James, chapter 3, verse 14. Read. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, read. Glory not, and lie not against the truth. You hear what the Bible is saying? But if you have bitter envying and strife in your heart. You see, that's the characteristic. What we read in Deuteronomy chapter 1, you understand? Verse 12 is exactly what we read here. Bitter ending and strife in your mind. Because some of you, like I said, I keep repeating this over and over. Some of you not getting it. Some of you came into the truth together. You understand? But you don't, you didn't, you didn't listen to the class, friendship, not friendship. You didn't apply that concept. So now, guess what? There's bitter ending and strife. That's why. When one of, your, one of you brothers that you give a, give a brother counsel, listen, tell such and such, tell such and such to do X, Y, and Z. Guess what? There's just confusion over simple matters. You know why? Because there's bitter envy and strife in your mind. That's why. You understand? You don't apply that royal law. You look at your brother as a nigger. You don't look at him as a son of God. That's the problem. Read again verse 14. The book of James, chapter 3, verse 14. Read. But if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. You glorying about it because you don't want to get, you don't want to change your mind. You don't want to change your thinking. You don't want to get your mind right. He says, and lie not against the truth. Don't lie against the laws of God. Go ahead. This wisdom descendeth not from above. Okay, come on. But is earthly, sensual, devilish. You see what the Bible is saying? Listen to what the Apostle James is saying. He says, this type of wisdom, it does not descend from above. Meaning it does not come from the most like God. But it's earthly, sensual, and deadly. Watch this. Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8, verse 21. Wisdom of Solomon says, this wisdom descended not from above, but it's earthly, sensual, and devilish. Read what you got. Wisdom of Solomon 8, verse 21. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 8, verse 21. Read. Nevertheless, when 
when I perceived that I could not otherwise obtain her, except God gave her me. And that was a point of wisdom. And that was a point of wisdom also to know whose gift she was. You see that? So wisdom is a gift of the most high God. King Solomon understood that, right? I prayed unto the Lord and besought him. You see that? He says he prayed unto he prayed for this wisdom. He prayed for wisdom. We have to pray for the Lord to bestow us with wisdom, wisdom to guide our people. And with my whole heart, what do you say? Come on, chapter 9, verse 1. Read. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 1. Oh God of my fathers and Lord of mercy, who has made all things with thy word? Read. And ordained man through thy wisdom, that he should have dominion over the creatures which thou hast made. From the time of Adam, he ordained man through his wisdom. The Lord set up men through his wisdom. Okay. Read on. Verse 3. Come on. And order the world according to equity and righteousness. You see that thing? Our job is to order the world according to equity and righteousness. And guess what? Before we can order the world, we must order ourselves. We must order the, the congregation. The congregation must be in order. Go ahead. And execute judgment with an upright heart. And execute judgment with an upright heart. Because why? You are humbled down to what this Bible is saying. Read. Give me wisdom that sitteth by thy throne. You see what the wisdom of the Lord is? It says, give me wisdom that sitteth by thy throne. It comes from above. You understand? That allows men to do what? To, to order the world according to equity and righteousness and execute judgment with an upright heart. Read. And reject me not from among thy children. You see that thing? Read, read verse 6 now. Come on. You know what? Keep reading. Read verse 5. For I, thy servant and son of thine handmaid, am a feeble person, mm -hmm. and of a short time, and too young for the understanding of judgment and laws. You see that? And too young for the understanding of judgment and laws. That's why we have, a, what, we have a rating system according to how the Lord set it up. Number one. Number two. We have to teach the laws of God. We must obey God's commandments. We must not be wavering when it comes to the commandments of the Most High God. Because that's how we order our nation together. Go ahead. For though a man be never so perfect among the children of men, Read. yet if the wisdom be not with him, he shall be nothing regarded. You see that? If the wisdom of the Lord is not with us, you will not be regarded. You will be regarded as nothing. That's why now at the, at the, uh, as a nation, we are regarded as nothing by this nation. Why? Because the wisdom of the Lord is not with us as a nation anymore. That's why now the Lord is waking us up. He's bringing us back to the glorious gospel of the blessed God. Watch this. Now go back to James. James chapter 3. Read verse 16 again. The book of James chapter 3 verse 16. Go ahead. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. No, read verse 15. I'm sorry. Read verse 15. Read verse 15 one more again. The book of James, chapter 3, verse 15. Read. This wisdom descended not from above. Mm -hmm. It's earthly, sensual, devilish. You see that? This, 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 this wisdom that we're reading about here, bitter ending and strife in your mind, is that that wisdom does not descend from the most high God, but it's, it's earthly, sensual, and devilish, because it's against the laws of God. It's earthly wisdom. Earthly wisdom cannot, cannot trump God's wisdom. You understand? Read on. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. You see that? When there's, when there's envy, strife, guess what? There's confusion and every evil work. Understand that? That's why there's so much confusion about basic things that brothers are given tasks to do. Brother, we need you to do X, Y, and Z. Yes, sir. But when you get there, you do your own thing. You understand? You don't seek counsel because you think you got it. Guess what? If you can be unfaithful with something simple as planning the peace, you will be unfaithful with brothers and sisters that you have to guide in this truth. Understand that? So it's serious business. Everything is a test with the most high. Guess what? Everything is a test. When you're given an instruction to do, if you don't seek counsel while you are in real time with the instruction, I can tell that you will not be able to lead the nation because you're just going to win. You understand? Watch this. 
Go back to Deuteronomy, okay? Chapter 1, read verse 12 one more again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 12. Read. How can I myself alone bear your cumbrance and your burden and your strife? Mm -hmm. So he's asking the question because why? Because Israel, they always want to do their own thing, their self will. I'm going to give you some examples. Watch this. Give me the book of Exodus 20, verse 18. Exodus chapter, chapter 20. Because Israel was murmuring and complaining, right? I'm going to show you. I'm going to paint a picture for you. I'm going to show you how wicked our people are. Guess what? When you come into this truth, you brothers, especially because you, are, you, you, are, you have to be grouped to become leaders. You cannot be battling with basic things. That means you battling with secret, secret sin. And when it's time for you to be given instruction and to, to help your nation, you struggle. You bet me. You are winning it. You don't seek counsel. You want to do your own thing when you're out there because you're trying to prove when you got it. That's simple as hell. Read that Exodus 20 verse 18. Read that. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 18. Read. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. Because at this point, Mount Zion is on fire. You understand? The most High God is over there. Christ. You understand? Is that they, the children of Israel, our forefathers, they saw the thundering, the lightning, the noise of the trumpet, the mountain smoking. They saw it. Is that the people saw it? They removed and stood afar off. Watch this. Go ahead. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. Mm -hmm. but, but let not God speak with us, lest we die. You see what they are saying? Because in Exodus 24, they said they wanted to speak to Moses. That, that Moses only speak to you, Moses. He only speaks. He also must speak to us. But when the Mosai did this, they said, you know what? We don't want to We don't want to talk to the Lord. We talk to you, Moses. You talk to the Mosai. They got their minds right. Okay, watch this. Go ahead. And Moses said unto the people, fear not. For God is come to prove you. You see that? For God is come to prove you. The Lord is always proving us all the time. Come on. And that his fear may be before your faces, that ye sin not. That ye what? That ye sin not. The reason why the Lord is coming to prove us, he is coming to prove us to see if we fear him and that we keep his commandments. That's what it means when he says, and ye sin not. Go ahead. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. Read that again, verse 21. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 21. Mm -hmm. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. So Moses went to the mount. Moses went to the mount, and the people saw Moses go to the mount. Everybody's looking at this thing going down. Everybody's looking at this side. They see Moses go up to the Lord. They see him. While Moses is over there, Mount Zion is on fire like that. You understand? They see him. Watch this. Exodus 32 verse 1. The book of Exodus, chapter 32 verse 1. Go ahead. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves unto Aaron. The people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said, mm -hmm. and said unto him, Up! Make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we want not what is become of him. You see what they are saying? Remember, it says when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount. Hold on a second. We just read that they saw Moses go to the mount, and they saw the mount was on fire. Moses is over there. But guess what they are saying? It says, when they saw Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto, Mo unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us God, we shall go before us. You see, you see how evil Israel is? This is the blueprint. You understand? So what I'm going to show you is, we, you are given instruction. Listen, stay here, hear not. The Lord is coming to prove you. We give you an instruction, bro. We need you to handle X, Y, and Z. We need you X, X, handle one, two, and three. Guess what happens? As soon as you are given the instruction and you go, 
while you are by yourself over there, guess what? This spirit that we read here jumps on you. Some of you, because I've seen during this piece, this piece going on, I, I did the thing the way that I did, it was by design, but not by accident. Understand that. Guess what? As soon as you are no longer among the brethren, you are by yourself out there, you don't make calls. You don't call us to tell us what the hell is going on. And these are things that you brothers, it's something simple to handle. But if you cannot handle going to the shops and buying stuff, dealing with having to deal with garments and things like that, basic stuff like that, you cannot deal with it. You will not make it. You understand? You will not make it. Because some of you, you are self-willed. You just go out there, you think you, you know what you're doing. No, 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 no. You must be called, that's why it's cancelled before every action. The decision you're making out there affects your nation. A lot of you don't think like that. You don't think about your nation, you think about yourself. You understand? Read it again, verse 1. Exodus chapter 32, verse 1. Read. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we would not what has become of him. You see that we would not. He says, As for this Moses, we don't understand what's going on with him. You understand? This is not the same Moses that came out of Egypt with us. We don't, know, we don't understand because the Lord was dealing with Moses. The Most High was dealing with Moses. Moses was dealing, Moses was, was, was not a normal man. He was not a regular dude. No, he was a son of God. The Lord was dealing with Moses on a higher level. That's why they are saying what they are saying. You know why they are doing this? We just read it. Go back to James 3. James chapter 3, read verse 14 and 15 together. Come on. The book of James, chapter 3, verse 14. Read. But if ye have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. You see that? You see what he's saying? Read on, verse 16 now. Verse 16. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. You see that? Because if there's envy, there's strife. Because you might be thinking, well, me, I don't have envy. Your actions dictate that. Me, I don't have strife. Your actions dictate that. You understand? As long as the what, what, I can tell you right now, as the scriptures are coming up, some of you are thinking, oh, that's not me. No, that's you. You understand? Because here what we're reading in Exodus, they are having bitter and envy and strife in their heart. You understand? Against Moses. That's what's going on here. So that's why when you're given simple instructions, you cannot execute them. Listen, if you are, when you are, if you are faithful with this, you are faithful with much. So we have to think twice before we give an instruction to handle something because you're not going to think about your nation, you're going to think about your, you and yourself. Okay? Go back to Exodus now. Exodus 32. Read verse 6 now. Exodus 32 verse 6. Watch this. The book of Exodus, chapter 32 verse 6. Read. And they rose up early in the morrow and offered burnt offerings and, and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. You see that thing? Is that the people began to do what? They sat down, they ate, they got drunk, and then they rose up to play. You know what this goes into? That goes into rebellion. This is what is this is what he's talking about. Rebellion, party. That's what they were doing. Because this is what was on their mind. And as they are, they remember they are drunk. Men and women getting drunk. What do you think going to happen? Orgies. They are partying. All men of evil going on. That's what they were doing. Better ending inside because the Mo Moses was not even far. He was on the mount. But even though they, can, they could see where Moses was right there, they still did evil in the sight of the Lord. So what about you? When you give an instruction and you are far, 30, 50, 80 kilometers from where we are, what do you think going to happen when you are over there and you don't see cancer? Our forefathers, they failed while looking at Moses on the mount, being given the lively oracles. They still did evil. They got drunk. They ate, they got drunk. They started to do evil stuff. 
So what about you when we are not even in, we can't we can't even see you? What do you think gonna happen? You think we can trust that? No, we're not gonna trust that because we see what the scripture tell us. Read. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go, get thee down, for thy people, which thou brought us out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. You see what the Moses God is telling Moses? He said, Listen, your people that you delivered out of Egypt, you see what they are doing? They've corrupted themselves. The most that God is denouncing Israel right here. He is telling Moses, that's your people. You see what he's saying? He said, that's not my people. I don't know that. That's your people, Moses, that you delivered out of Egypt. You understand? The most that God is already disgusted with us on this one. Go ahead. Come on. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. Stop right there. They've done what? They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have turned aside quickly. Quickly. Imagine. They are in the wilderness. They see Moses, the Moses on the mouth. They can see it. They can see him over there. They turned aside quickly. That's why in verse 1, is that they told Aaron, listen, make us go. As for this Moses, we don't know what has become of him. So they've turned aside quickly out of the way which was commanded. You are given counsel. You think you're not going to, you, when you think you, you, you're not going to fall under this category where you're going to turn aside quickly after you're given an instruction to do so your nation can benefit. Some of you, you when you read the scriptures, you do your chapters, but you're not, you don't think yourself in it. You don't picture yourself in this book. That's why when you read the book, you close it, you forget everything that you read, and then you go back to nigger mode. With fringes and a bottle of blue. Read again verse 8. The book of Exodus, chapter 32, verse 8. Read. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. Come on. They have made them a molten calf mm. and have worshipped it. You see that? Quickly. Idolatry. They just turned to idolatry. Go ahead. And have sacrificed their unto and said, these be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Now think about this here. You telling me that um, they just believe that these, these, these are the gods that delivered them out of Egypt? No. It's because sin is pleasurable. The reason why they believe that is because they love play, doing the orgies, worshipping other gods. You understand? You're half naked and all that stuff. Sleeping around, getting drunk and all. They enjoy that. That's why when this was said to them, they believed to do. You know why? Because sin is pleasurable. Get that in um, Hebrews 11. Okay. Hebrews chapter 11, read verse 25. Watch this. The book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 25. Come on. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Than to do what? Than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. You see that? Than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. So sin is pleasurable. That's what the Lord is telling us right here. That's why it was so easy for them to what? Go back to Exodus 32 verse 8. The book of Exodus chapter 32 verse 8. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf and have worshipped it and have sacrificed their unto and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. You see that? They believe that. You know why they believe that? Because they were enjoying the pleasures of sin for a season. That's why they believe that. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and hmm. behold, it is a stiff-necked people. You see that? He says, listen, Moses, I've seen these people. It is a stiff-necked people. I've seen them. I know them. They're rebellious. They're hard-headed. They're stiff-necked. The Lord is saying, I'm not surprised about what they're still saying. The same way the Lord is not surprised, we're not surprised when things happen. Why? Because we read the scriptures, you see, okay, this is what happened back then. Guess what? It is bound to happen today. 
That's why the, the things that they written about time, they were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Hope, hope in what? Hope in the scriptures that we're not going to repeat the same mistakes that our forefathers did in the wilderness. But guess what? Brothers are still doing the same nonsense that our forefathers did back then. Okay? A lot of you, you hear, you say you want to serve the Lord, but a lot of you, you just lie to yourself, you lie to the most like God, you just fake in the funk. You have to examine yourself to understand why you're here. Watch this. Give me, um, give me that in um, Exodus. Uh, no, no, go back to Deuteronomy 1. Let's go back to Deuteronomy chapter 1. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 12. Okay, drop Exodus, Deuteronomy 1. Read verse 12. One more again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 12. Go ahead. How can I myself alone bear your cumbrance and your burden and your strife? Read. Take you wise men and understanding mm -hmm. and known among your tribes, and I will make them rulers over you. You see what he's saying? He says, because I cannot bear yourself alone. The most High God is saying, listen, Moses, because Moses was given a command to do this thing. You understand? He was given a command to do this thing. This is going into what? This is going into setting up leaders. Moses is setting up leaders right here. Read verse 13 again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Take your wise men and understanding, and known among your tribes, and I will make them rulers over you. You see what he's saying? He says, take your wise men. What gives us wisdom? The laws of God. And understanding. What gives us understanding? The laws of God. And known among your tribes. Known for what? Known for their wisdom. Known for the understanding of the law. He says, and I will make them rulers over you. Counselors. That's, what, that's another name for rulers. Counselors. And I will make them counselors over you. What is Moses doing? He's setting up leadership. That's what he's doing. But the only way, the only condition for leaders to be set up, read verse 13 again so we understand. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 13. Read. Take you wise men in understanding and known among your tribes, and I will make them rulers over you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And he answered me and said, The thing which thou hast spoken is good for us to do. You see, that's another thing that Israel does. Israel, they love to say that. But when it comes down to application, guess what? That's where you start to see cracks. You understand? That's where cracks, they start to pop up and show up. You understand? Read it again, verse 14. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 14. And he answered me and said, The thing which thou hast spoken is good for us to do. And it is a good thing, setting up leadership and counselors. It is a good thing. It's good for us to do. Because it's according to the most High God's law. We know? So I took the chief of your, of your tribes, wise men, and know, mm -hmm. and made them heads over you. Really? Captains, captains over thousands, and captains over hundreds, and captains over fifties, and captains over tens, and officers among your tribes. You see that? It says, wise men, known and known, and made them heads over you. Heads over you is rulers over you, meaning counselors. You understand? Captains over thousands, captains over hundreds, or, and captains over fifties, captains over tens, and officers among your tribe. That's what we're setting up in this camp right now. You understand? And, but for this to take place, guess what? You must have wisdom of the Lord, which is the commandment. You must have understanding of the Lord. You must be known for your understanding and for your wisdom of the laws of the most like God. That's why you are commanded to study. That's why you're commanded to apply. That's why you're commanded to seek counsel for of understanding of the scriptures. You understand? So Moses, he did this thing. Watch this. Let's go back. Give me the book of Exodus, okay? Give me Exodus uh, chapter 18, verse 17. Exodus 18, verse 17. The book of Exodus. Chapter 18, verse 17. Go ahead. And Moses' father-in-law said unto him, The thing that thou doest is not good. So now Moses' father-in-law is telling Moses, Listen, the thing that you're doing is not good. What is the thing that Moses was doing that was not good? Jump up to verse 18. Watch this. The book of Exodus, chapter 18, verse 13. Read. 
And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses set to judge the people. And the people stood by Moses from the morning until unto the evening. You see, when Moses was judging the people from sun up to sun down, that's what he was doing. Okay, go ahead. And when Moses' father in law saw all that he did to the people, he said, What is this thing that thou doest to the people? Why sittest thou thyself alone? And all the people stand by thee from morning unto even. You see what he's asking? He says, Why do you sit by yourself alone? And all the people stand by you from morning unto even. He was telling Moses, The way in which you are doing this is not effective. Okay, go ahead. And Moses said unto his father in law, Because the people come unto me to inquire of God. He says, Because the people come to me to inquire of the Lord, because the Lord was dealing with Moses directly. But now Jethro is looking at this. He said, Listen, Moses, this thing that you're doing is not good, meaning it's not effective. Watch this. Go ahead. When they have a matter, they come unto me, and I judge between one and another. Mm -hmm. And I do make them know the statutes of God and his laws. You see what he's saying? He said, listen, they come to me with issues. They, they've got problems. When they come to me, guess what I do is I judge the matters. I judge their matters that they have one with another. I judge the matters that they have among themselves. I judge the issues that they are dealing with individually. I'm dealing with those issues. You understand? So now, watch this. Read. And Moses' father-in-law said unto him, the thing that thou doest is not good. So what is he telling Moses? Then listen, this thing is not going to work out in the long run. It's not sustainable. It's not going to scale. That's what he's telling Moses. Okay, watch this. Go ahead. Thou wilt surely way away. Mm -hmm. Both thou and this people that is with thee. You see what he's saying? He said, listen, you're going to destroy yourself and you're going to destroy these people that are with you. Go ahead. For this thing is too heavy for thee. Really? Thou art not able to perform it thyself alone. So you see what he's telling him? Listen, you're not going to be able to do this thing alone. That's why we're setting up leadership. That's why you brothers are being raised up. Because this is not the type of work that one man can do alone. Understand that. Even Christ had a dream team. He had the 12 apostles with him. You understand? So that's what we're doing in this camp. Guess what? As we're doing that, some of you brothers, by your conduct, by your behavior, I can tell you, you're not ready. You don't want this to take place. You want, you want the congregation to be destroyed. You want the people to be destroyed because you don't want to step up. Basic things, you choke it. Go ahead. How can now unto my voice? I will give thee counsel, and God shall be with thee. You see what he's saying? He says, listen now to my voice. Because remember, this is Moses' father-in-law. That is far, that is parent also. Understand. Read. Be thou for the people to Godward. You see what he's saying? He says, be thou to the people to Godward. Meaning you deal with the Lord. Go ahead. That thou mayest bring the causes unto God. That you bring the, the causes to God. The people will come to you. You take the thing to the Lord if they are too hard for you, Moses, to deal with. Go ahead. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws. Mm -hmm. And shall show them the way wherein that they must walk Come on. and the work that they must do. Read that verse again, verse 20. The book of Exodus, chapter 18, verse 20. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws and shall show them the way wherein they must walk and the work that they must do. You see that? It says, Thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws. That's what we're doing in this camp. We're teaching you ordinances and laws and shall show them the way wherein they must walk, meaning the way you must conduct yourself, what to do, what not to do, and the work that they must do, the office that you're dealing with. you given an office to deal with, guess what? Execute that office with the spirit of grace. Don't, don't be sloppy. You cannot be told over and over, brother, update the website. How come our, our SoundCloud is not up to date? How come the TikTok video is not done? How come this? I mean, come on. These are basic stuff. As an example, you understand? And guess what? The, this work is for is for the benefit of the 12 tribes of Israel and to glorify the Father which is in heaven. Understand that. Okay, go ahead. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men. Stop right there. 
So guess what? He says, teach them the ordinances and laws and show them in the way in which they must walk and the work they must do. Now, over there, it says, thou shalt provide over all the people that you've taught ordinances and laws and you know they understand justice and judgment. They know how to make decisions based on what that does say the law. You understand? Able men. Go ahead. Such as fear God. They must fear the Lord with? Men of truth. Men of the law. They must understand the law. Go ahead. Hating covetousness. They must understand the last commandment, covetousness. Go ahead. And place such over them to be rulers of thousands mm -hmm. and rulers of hundreds, really? rulers of fifties and rulers of tens. You see what he's telling him? He's giving Moses a ranking system. You understand? The most I got approved of this thing. That's why it's written. He's giving Moses a ranking system, a chain of command. Okay? Read, because we are God's military. Understand that. Read. And let them charge the people at all seasons. Mm -hmm. And it shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto thee. But every single matter. He says, when the matter is too great for them to handle, they will bring the matter to you. Read. But every small matter they shall judge. You see that they shall judge that matter among themselves according to the law. Not according to Frankish, but according to the laws of God. Go ahead. So shall it be easier for thyself, and they shall bear the burden with thee. You see that? They shall bear the burden of the people with you. So you brothers, a lot of you, you don't understand that's, that's what we're doing here. The things that were done in the past, that's what we're doing right now. Because guess what? Everybody got problems. And some people have more than one. Some people have a plethora of demons on them. They have a plethora of issues that they need fixed. And guess what? They require just counsel. They require, they require a brightness. They require faithfulness to the laws of the Most High God. They require wisdom and understanding and knowledge of the law. They, are, they require all that. And for that to happen, study must take place. Application must take place. It doesn't matter if you know all these precepts, but you are playing none. It's better to know a few precepts and you are applying them than to know more and apply none. That's simple as hell. Okay, go ahead. If thou shalt do this thing and God command thee so, mm -hmm. then thou shalt be able to endure. Great. And all these people shall also go to their place in peace. Mm -hmm. You see that they're going to go to their place in peace because they're going to know how to judge matters also. That's the point. Go ahead. So Moses hearkened to the voice of his father-in-law and to all that he had said. You see that Moses hearkened to his father-in-law because that was his father. The Lord approved this thing. Go ahead. And Moses chose able men out of all Israel and made them heads over the people. Rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. Right. And they judged the people at all seasons. The hard causes they brought unto Moses. Mm -hmm. But every small matter, they judged themselves. You see that? That's the point right there. He says, they, the hard cases, they brought them to Moses. But the, every small matter, they judged themselves. Because they understood the law. They can operate on that level. So they know what? These type of issues we can handle. But the other issues, the hard matters, we must bring them to upper management. So they can be dealt with. You understand? Read on, verse 27, come on. And Moses let his father-in-law depart, and he went his way into his own land. You see that? That's what Moses did. Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 1 now. Deuteronomy chapter 1, read verse 16. No, verse 15 again. Deuteronomy 1, verse 15. Read that again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 15. Come on. So I took the chief of the tribes, Mm -hmm. wise men and no and made them heads over you captains over thousands captains over hundreds captains over fifties and captains over tens and officers among your tribes you see what he's saying so guess what this right here Moses is setting up leadership but remember when we came out of Egypt we did not understand the law Moses had to teach us so it's not that when we came out of Egypt Moses set up um, leadership and all that. No, it didn't happen like that. They, Moses first had to teach the law. And when Moses was teaching the law, he was able to see those men 
that the Spirit of the Lord was dealing with, those men that understood the law, those men that were applying the law, those men that feared the most like God, those men that were able, they were easily able to follow counsel and command, follow instruction. Then Moses was able to say, okay, that brother right there, that brother, that brother, that brother, you, 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 you are going to be responsible for X, Y, and Z. That's what we're doing right now. You understand? Go ahead. And I charge your judges at that time, say, hear the causes between your brethren and judge righteously between every man and his brother mm -hmm. and the stranger that is within him. So now you see that it's now verse 15 is calling them judges. Verse 15, he called them wise men. You understand? Verse 13, he called them rulers over. You see that? So rulers, wise men, judges. What are these called? They are called counselors. Read it again. So we understand verse 15. One more again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 16. Mm -hmm. And I charge your judges at that time, say, here are the causes between your brethren and judge righteously between every man and his brother and the stranger that is within him. Go ahead. Ye shall not respect the persons in judgment. Ye shall not respect persons in judgment. Meaning what? Don't show partiality. The most I hate that. He says, ye shall not show, ye shall not respect persons in judgment. Oh, that's my friend. Oh, no, but I love him. Oh, mm -mm -mm. oh no. No. The most that God's laws is what must be applied. Okay, go ahead. But you shall hear the small as well as the great. You see that? You shall hear the small matters. You shall hear the small and the great matters. Okay, come on. Ye shall not be afraid of the face of the ma of man. So he's explaining that at the beginning of verse 17 when he says, ye shall not respect persons in judgment means ye shall not be afraid of the face of man. Meaning what? You must judge the matter according to the scriptures. Go ahead. For the judgment is God's. For the what? For the judgment is God's. Because that judgment is God's judgment. Understand that. Go ahead. And the cause that is too hard for you, bring it unto me and mm. I will hear it. You see that? If the matter is too hard for you to deal with, bring it unto me, I will hear it and I will judge it. Go ahead. And I commanded you at that time all the things which you should do. You see that thing? All the things which you should do. You are, the, the things that you should do is called counsel. From counselors, rulers and judges. You understand? Rulers and judges and wise men. That's the counselors. Plural. Okay? Now watch this. Give me the book. Give me the book of Isaiah. Chapter 1 verse 26. Isaiah 1 verse 26. Come on. The book of Isaiah. Chapter 1 verse 26. Read. And I will restore thy judges as at the first. You see that? As at the first, meaning from the time when we came out of Egypt during the time of Exodus with Moses. When Moses set up leadership, rank, and structure, that's what he's going into. And I will restore thy judges as at the first. That's what we're doing right now. Go ahead. And thy counselors as at the beginning. And your counselors as at the beginning. You see who the judges are called? The judges are called counselors. Thy judges as of the first, thy counselors at, at the beginning. So these counselors, they are judges. Right? Afterward, thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. You see that? So the only time when the nations are going to be called, they're going to call us the city of righteousness, the faithful city, guess what? The restoration of the judges and counselors must take place first, which are the men. You understand? which are the men. So basic instructions, you must be able to know how to follow those instructions and execute them. The manner in which you do it, you're going to be able to tell if you will be, how are you going to handle a matter that involves a brother or a sister? How will you, will you are you going to use the laws of God to judge the matter? Or you're going to, you're going to win it. You're going to come up with your own thing. Like you are doing with basic things that are not people, the basic stuff that you have to go buy at the shop. Basic stuff that like if you're struggling with that, you are not going to be able to deal with a brother or a sister because guess what? Your, your counsel can destroy a brother. Your counsel can destroy a sister. Your counsel can destroy a family. Your counsel can destroy a marriage. Understand that. Okay? Watch this. Give me Deuteronomy 25 and 1. The book of Deuteronomy, 
chapter 25, verse 1. Go ahead. If there be a controversy between men and they come unto judgment, that the judges may judge them. Do you see that? That they what? That the judges may judge them. That the judges may judge them. Who's the judges? The counselors that the Lord says he will restore. The wise men, the rulers that the Lord said he will restore. Go ahead. Then they shall justify the righteous and mm -hmm. condemn the wicked. You see that? They shall justify the righteous when they judge and they shall condemn the wicked for his wicked deeds, according to the law. Jump down to the... No, give me now. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 17. Okay, Deuteronomy 17. Let's start at verse 8. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 17, verse 8. Read. If there arise a matter too hard for thee in judgment... Stop right there. If there what? If there arise a matter too hard for thee in judgment, if there arise a matter that is too hard for you in judgment, that's what we just read in Deuteronomy chapter 1. If the matter be too hard for thee, Moses said, What? Bring it unto me. Go back. Go back to Deuteronomy 1. Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse, verse 17 again. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 17. Go ahead. He shall not respect persons in judgment. Read. But he shall hear the small as well as the great. He shall not be afraid of the face of man, for the judgment is God's. Read. And the cause that is too hard for you, bring it unto me, and I will hear it. Now we are in this situation now. Now we're going over there. You told me chapter 17, read verse 8. If the matter is too hard for you, what must be done? Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 17, verse 8. Go ahead. If there arise a matter too hard for thee in judgment, between blood and blood, Blood and blood that goes into what? Your neighbor. Your neighbor. Your blood neighbor. Go ahead. Between plea and plea. Because between plea and plea. Because one is plea is coming to plead for himself. Another one is coming to plead for himself against what you've done I unto him. You understand? Between plea and plea. Go ahead. And between stroke and stroke. Because they are going back and forth. They are arguing. There's problems in the nation. Right? The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 17, verse 8. If there arise a matter too hard for the judgment between blood and blood, between plea and plea, and between stroke and stroke, being matters of controversy within thy gates, Wait. then shalt thou arise and get thee up into the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. You see what he's saying? He says, if the matter is too hard, there's controversial talk, there's controversial issues going, happening between husband and wife, brother and brother, uncle and 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 uncle and, 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 and sons and all that, and daughters and all, there's issues in the nation, like there's issues in the congregation right now. Yeah, there's issues in the marriages right now. The Lord is saying, you say, listen what? He says, get up to thee, get up into the place which the Lord thy God shall choose, because that's where the judges were, because the methods were too hard now. Go ahead. And thou shalt come unto the priests, the Levites, and unto the judge that shall be in those days. You see and that? And unto the judge, unto the judge that shall be in those days, the counselor that shall be in those days, the wise men that shall be in those days. Go ahead. And inquire, and they shall show thee the sentence of judgment. We're going to show you the sentence of judgment according to what the Bible says. And not only that, according to experience. You understand? It's not just based on what the is. The, yes, the scriptures is where we go for reference. But you do it over and over, you get experience, you understand? Then you get to see, okay, we're going to apply this law for this situation right here. Some of you don't see counsel because you don't want the issues in your marriage, you don't want your issues in the marriage to come out so they can be dealt with. You continue within the marriage. And the day when the most I pays you a visit, they, then it's going to blow up like the world trade. You understand? Travel in the flesh. You don't account for that. You don't prepare for that stuff. You just think, no, you just, you just write it. Everything is all good. You're not preparing for what... Say, the first attack that Satan did was on a marriage. Understand that? Okay. Read. And I shall do according to the sentence, which they of that place, which the Lord shall choose, shall show thee. Read. And thou shalt observe to do according to all that they inform thee. You see what he's saying? You shall do according to all that they inform you. 
according to all that they give you, to, they counsel you with. Where the counsel that they give you according to, to your job is to apply them. But some of you, you apply it, and then along the way, you add your own spices. Did you follow the counsel? No, you did not follow the counsel. You didn't. You did not follow the counsel, and when things go seriously wrong, now you're going to be crying to the Lord. You're going to be coming to leadership and say, listen, we are in trouble. Such and such is going on. He did this, and he said that, and he did this. But how long has this been going on? So it's been going on for three months. So you telling me for three months you've been sitting with this. Now is a mess. You want me to cancel this? I'm not touching that. You understand? So why? Why am I bringing this? I'm bringing this out because guess what? Some of you brothers are married already. Some of you, you are not yet married. So you, it behooves you to sit down and understand what this book is saying. Learn. He can't understand how matters are judged. You understand? And some of you, you as you brothers, you've got issues amongst yourself, but you don't use the scriptures to solve them. You contain it. You hold it in. That's some evil stuff. So guess what? You will remain a spiritual midget as long as you don't get, you don't deal with those issues that you have with your brother. You don't deal with those matters that you have with your brother. You understand? Because me, if I have to get involved, it's not going to be nice what's going to come back. Understand that. You have been given great period to sort that stuff out, but you don't want to fix it. You're pretending that everything is all good. You understand? Not no more. Go ahead. According to the sentence of the law, which they shall teach thee. So you and according that, to the judgment. Hold on. According to the sentence of the law, which they shall teach you. Meaning what? You must do according to the sentence that is handed down based on the law. What does the law say? The law says, do this, do that, don't do this, don't do that. It says, according to the sentence, you understand, of the law which they shall teach thee. That's how you're going to handle that message. Go ahead. And according to the judgment which they shall tell thee. Read. Thou shalt do. Thou shalt what? Thou shalt do. Thou shalt do. Meaning you must do exactly as you are instructed from the moment you receive the counsel. Some of you don't do that. You start the council and then you stop along the way when you're by yourself. Because you know what? You're thinking, we don't see you. No, but the Lord sees you. Some of you are so you, you are so dumb, you don't realize that the Lord is right there with you. Your angel is right there just writing down. Oh, that nigga right there. He decided I'm not going to follow the council. I'm going to do my own thing. You, the angel is writing down. You're not in the spirit. Okay, go ahead. Thou shalt not decline from the sentence which they shall show thee. Mm -hmm. The right hand, nor to the left. You see what it's saying? You shall not decline from the sentence which they shall show thee. Meaning, don't do your own thing. Don't decline. Meaning, don't say you are given the counsel. You are not when you're supposed to apply the counsel. You decide, no, I don't really like that. I want to go this way. I think this way is better. Okay. Let that way be better. But the day it blows up, do not, don't come back to us and say, no, listen, I need help with this. I need prayers to go up. I need brothers to fast for me and what so on and so forth. Hold on. The counsel that you were given to prevent this, did you follow it? No, I did not. So what happened? No, uh, when I was, uh, I was applying the counsel, I decided to do this and that. So, okay, so now you are paying for not following counsel. Why should we be crying with you? Why? Why should we be sending prayers up? Because when you decided I'm not going to follow the council to hell with those, to hell with leadership, I don't give a damn about that. You understand? But when problem comes, guess what? You want, you want the prayers to be sent up. You want brothers and sisters to fast, to afflict their soul. You cannot make this stuff up. Read that verse again, verse 11. The book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 17, verse 11. Read. Right. According to the sentence of the law, which they shall teach thee, mm -hmm. and according to the judgment, which they shall tell thee, thou shalt do. Thou shalt not decline from the sentence which they shall show thee, to the right hand, nor to the left. To the right hand, nor to the left. Go ahead. Verse 12. Watch this. Come on. And the man that will do presumptuously. Stop right there. And the man that will do presumptuously. 
presumptuously means to be self-willed. Presumptuously. Hold this. We coming back here. Give me the book of uh, First Peers. And the man that will do presumptuously. Let's see what, what, let's understand what this is going into. Okay. No, Second Peter. Second Peter 2. Second Peter 2, verse 10. Watch this. Second book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 10. Mm -hmm. But chiefly, them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness. Read. And despise government. You see that? So them that walk after the flesh, meaning after sin, they are lust, the lust of uncleanness, because you don't want to keep, you don't want to follow counsel. You are moving in the lust of uncleanness because your mind is not right. Your mind is not sober. Your mind is full of demons and you despise government. You be despising the government that the Lord is setting up. You despise, you hate, you detest God's command. You don't want the Lord to rule over you. That's what you're saying. Right? Presumptuous are they. You see that? Presumptuous are they. Go ahead. Self-willed. Stop right there. Self-willed. They despise government. They walk up to the flesh in the lust of uncleanness. They are self-willed. Presumptuous. They, in the neck, they, call, they say, they are chacharach. They are chacharach in the neck. They are chacharach. They are too forward. Self-willed. You, you trust yourself. You don't trust in the Lord. You don't trust in the sentence of the law that you were taught. You don't trust in the counsel that you were given to follow and to apply so you can be saved. No. You decide you're going to do your own thing, but you don't think about the nation. You understand? Go ahead. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. You see that? They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. They don't care about leadership. They don't care about the command, the structure, the the order that the Most High God is restoring in these last days in the nation of Israel. If you cannot follow command, you cannot be here. You cannot follow counsel. You cannot be here. You cannot follow basic instructions. You cannot be here because why would you be here but you don't want to follow counsel? Why would you be here but you don't want to follow command? Why would you be here but you hate order and structure? You cannot be here among us. Nobody's forcing you to be here. You can go back to the Christian church. And do what they do, which is what? Nothing. And do whatever the hell they want, which is what you want to do. Because the minute you cannot follow basic instruction is because you want to do whatever the hell you want. And when you are called and checked about that, you don't like it. To hell with you. You understand? To hell with you. We are not here to rub your back and to, 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 to rub your back and cut. No, we're not doing that. We have a nation to build. Understand that, okay? Now, watch this. Go back to where was that? Okay, Deuteronomy 17. Read verse 12 again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 17, verse 12. Read. And the man that will do presumptuously and will not hearken unto the priest that standeth to minister there before the Lord thy God, mm -hmm. go unto the judge. Come on. Even that man shall die. Stop right there. Even that man shall what? Even that man shall die. Even that man shall die. Strange things will start to happen to you because your mind is not right. Your spirit is not really here. Your spirit is somewhere else. You don't actually like doing the stuff that, the, that we want to do for the congregation to glorify the most like God. The strange things will start to take place in your life. You're going to think it's nothing, it's nothing serious, but no, it is something serious. You understand? That's why some of you, you have deep hatred, but you hide your hatred with blind lips. Because today, I, I understand the spirit is moving. Certain decisions are made. Certain brothers are given certain instruction and certain offices to handle because certain spirits need to be popped up. So I can see, oh, that one don't like this. That one don't like that brother being in that position. That, that, he doesn't like that brother being dealing with that office. He has hatred for that brother. Okay. And the only way to see it, you have to, you have to shuffle things around. Then you start to see, oh, that's where the issue is. That's why he's acting that way. Because you think, no, I know him. I used to know him in the world. He's such and such. No, 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 no. That's what they said about Moses. As for this Moses, we don't know what has become of him. That's the same mindset you got. 
for the brother that you came in the truth with. Understand that. Understand what I'm saying. If you're spiritual, you'll understand and you'll get your mind right. Read the verse again. Verse 12. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 17, verse 12. And the man that will do presumptuously and will not hearken unto the priest that standeth to minister there before the Lord thy God, Wait. or unto the judge, even that man shall die. Come on. And thou shalt put away the evil from Israel. You see what he's saying? And he says, and thou shalt put away the evil from Israel. A brother that was presumptuous, self-willed, not afraid to speak evil of dignity, not afraid to complain to mama and for Rambia mouth, and to complain and to hate what they are supposed to be doing, hate what they, what they are given the instruction to do. They don't like doing it. Guess what? The most that God says, that man shall die and we put evil away from our mother. Obviously, we're not going to stone nobody to death, but the Lord will put you away from us because guess what? Your evil will spread among all of us. That's why the Lord says, put away the evil from among you. Because if that evil is not checked, it's going to spread among the whole congregation. That's why the Most High God commanded this thing right here. Go ahead, verse 13. And all the people shall hear and fear and do not more presumptuously. And do no more presumptuously. The people will hear it, the people will fear. That's why it was done the way that it was done. Some of you don't think about that. You know you read the script, but you're not, you don't put yourself in it. You are not actively listening and comprehending what the Most High God is bringing out. It just goes over your head. You are not actively participating in understanding what you read. You just came in through the text. You understand? You must sink your spirit into this book. So the Most High God can open to your understanding so you can see what's going on. You understand? You are not, you brothers, some of you, you are, listen, some brothers have been set up, okay, there's uh, some shuffling that is going on, okay? One of the brothers are being, are calling to actually check up on what's going on. Check on this, what's the status on this? What's the status on that? What's the status? Some of you, the way you're dealing with the brother, you just give him half information. You, and you don't, you, you're not even concerned about the way you're giving out the info. You know why? Because you don't look at that brother, you don't see the spirit, you don't see Christ. You still see a nigga that you came up in, you came in the truth with. You give him half information. Why? Because you're not actively in this. Some of you, you don't plan ahead. You just do stuff. Because you don't see cancer. And some of you are told, you are said, listen, you are told, okay, this is good that you're doing here. This is good that you're doing there. But don't become complacent. Listen, it's not even, it's not even three weeks. It's not even two weeks. Guess what, what just took place? You don't see cancer now. You, you see that the, how the devil moves? And I told you, I gave you the cancer. You know who you are. I gave you the cancer. I said, don't be complacent. Guess what just happened? You didn't see cancer about that. Now, some sisters are going to be wearing tops with ragamuffin garments. The hell is this? Now, give me the book of Numbers 13, verse 2. Read what you got. Numbers chapter 13, verse 2. Read that for me. The book of Numbers chapter 13, verse 2. Go ahead. Send thou men that thou may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel, of every tribe of their fathers shall ye send a man, everyone a ruler among them. You see that? Now Moses is going to send out spies to search out the land of Canaan. Moses is going to give a command. Remember, it says when the judges give you a command, you follow it according to how the sentence of the law that they taught you. The way that you was commanded, don't decline from the counsel you was given. Okay? Read on. Verse 3. Come on. And Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness of Paran. All those men were heads of the children of Israel. You see that all those men were heads of the children of Israel. Now, you can read the rest, the rest of the heads of the children of Israel by yourself here. Jump down to verse 17. Watch this. This is what Moses is telling them to do. Come on. The book of Numbers chapter 13 verse 17. Read. Right. And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said unto them, Get you up this way southward 
and go up into the mountain. You see that he says, get you up this way, southward. He says, go towards the south and go up into the mountain. Go ahead, watch this. Read. And see the land, what mm -hmm. it is, and the people that dwell at the inn, whether they be strong or weak, few or many. So he said, listen, go and do research upon the land. Investigate, see, check out the land, see the people that dwell upon the land, whether they be strong, whether they be weak, whether they are many or few. So this is a war tactic, it's a war strategy. Okay, go ahead. And what the land is that they dwell in, mm -hmm. whether it be good or bad. Right. And what cities they be that they dwell in, whether in tents or in strongholds. So he's doing is they go there and do research so we know and understand what type of what type of environment we're going into, what type of people we have to deal with, you understand? What type of cities they dwell in, what type of houses do they got, what type of strongholds have they set for themselves to fortify their city. What, he's saying survey the land. So we know when we go in, we know what to bring, how to arm ourselves, and how to attack, you understand, and how to conquer and take over. Read. And what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood therein or not, and be ye of good courage, and bring of the fruit of the land. Mm -hmm. Now the time was, now the time was the time of the first, first tribe grapes. It was, it was the first ripe grapes, the first ripe grapes, meaning what? The, the first fruit. That's what he's going into. Now, the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. Okay? He's going into that. Go ahead. So, there were, at this point right here, eh, there were, there were, there were, there were, um, there were harvesting what? Grapes. Okay? Go ahead. So, they went up and searched the land from the wilderness of Zin unto Reho, as men, as men come to Hamath. Go ahead. And they ascended by the south they and did came what? unto Hebron. Oh, 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 what did they do? Excuse me, sir. The book of Numbers chapter 13, verse 22. Come on. And they ascended by the south. You see that? They ascended by the south. Jump back up to verse 17 so we understand. The book of Numbers chapter 13, verse 17. Go ahead. Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said unto them, Go up this way southward you see and that? go, go up. It says go up this way southward. That's why it says they ascended by the south based on the counsel that Moses gave them. So, so far, they are following the counsel, right? Go back to verse 22. The book of Numbers chapter 13 verse 22. Read. Right? And they ascended by the south and came into Hebron. When I, where I, 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 I man Shishai and Talmai, the children of Anak, were. Mm -hmm. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. Go ahead. And they came unto the brook of Eshkol and cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes. Mm -hmm. And they bare it between two upon a staff. Right. And they brought of the pomegranates and of the figs. So now there was great pomegranates and figs. So guess what? So because remember during this time, just to go off, uh, to go on a tangent a little bit, what we were reading in verse 23, um, the, the type of, the, the fruit were bigger than they are now. That's why he says, and cut down from them a branch with one cluster of grapes, and they bear it between two upon a star. Meaning one cluster of grapes was, was carried by two men. You understand? One cluster of grapes was carried by two men. That's what's going on. Here. Go ahead. The place was called the Brook of Eshkol because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel cut down from things. Read. And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. So after 40 days, they returned back from fetching the land. Watch this. Go ahead. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel and to the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back 
and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. They showed them the fruit of the land. So, so far, counsel is being followed, right? Go ahead. And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sent us, whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. Read on. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. Mm -hmm. And the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. Read. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. And the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And the Canaanites. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. You see what he's saying? Remember, it says the Amalekites, he says, they dwell in the land of the south because it says, go towards the south. And the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites dwell in the mountains. Remember, verse 17, it says, go southward and go up into the mountains. Okay? So they followed the, the blueprint that Moses set for them. Go ahead. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at, at once and possess it, for we are for we are well able to overcome it. You see what they are saying? Caleb, he, he, he tells the people, whoa, 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 hold on. Wait. Everybody just calm down. He says, listen, we need to go down there and possess it because he says, for we are well able to overcome it. So Caleb, he had faith. This brother right here, he has faith this time. Okay? Watch this. Go ahead. But the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. So stop right there. You notice what just taking place here? It says, but the men that went up with him, so they were not going to go by themselves. If it was not for Caleb to say, listen, we're going up there. We want to check out the place, as Moses commanded us. It says, but the men that went up with him were not able to go up against, it says what? It says, as they said, we be not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. So they were afraid. So as Caleb was going up to go and check out the place, they didn't like it. They were unhappy about that. They were mad. So guess what? You, it appears that you follow the council, but inwardly you rage it, you hate it. But you don't want to make it seem like you don't want to do the council. You are doing it. But inwardly, you don't want to do it. That's what we're reading here. You understand? That's why they are saying what they are saying. Go ahead. Verse 31. Come on. The book of Numbers, chapter 13, verse 31. Pray. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Pray. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel. You see that? Hold on. Not only that, they are bringing up an evil report now. They're going to bring an evil, an evil and a negative report. You understand? It says what? Which the land they had said unto the children of Israel saying. What did they say? Say, the land though which, through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. You, you, you listen to what they are saying. Is that the land eats up the inhabitants, meaning the ground is eating up the people. Some evil stuff. You understand? This is an evil report that they are giving. What is it based on? It's based on fear. And behind fear is what? They, you don't, they don't want to take responsibility. They don't want to take accountability. They don't want to man up. That's the problem right there. They don't want to man up. Really? And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. Mm, you see what they're saying? They're afraid. The, the spirit of fear jumped on them. And the Most High did not give us the spirit of fear. But this time, the spirit of fear jumped on them. Now, they are bringing up a negative report so that, that, so that Moses said, okay, it's fine, don't go back. You see the spirit behind this? That's why they said what they said. That's why some brothers will say, listen, this is the council. Do X, Y, and Z. That's what the Lord says you must do. Some brothers will say, uh, 
They, they're not going to say nothing. They'll say, I'm going to do it. But guess what? Just monitor them through the week and see if they're actually going to do it. They don't do the council. You know why? Because of this spirit right here. This demonic, abominable spirit of fear, this spirit right here. Because he's afraid, afraid to what? Afraid of change. Comfortable in filth and garbage. Read the thing again, verse 32. The book of Numbers, chapter, chapter 13, verse 32. Read. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. Come on. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. Read. And there we saw the giants, mm -hmm. the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. So And so we were in their sight. And so we were in their sight. So what are they saying? They are telling Moses that we are free. We don't want to go back. That's what they are saying. What they are saying is we don't want to go back. We meaning what? We don't want to go and possess the land which the Lord swear unto our fathers. That's what they're saying. We don't want to go and possess the land. That's the same thing today. It's the same spirit today. We are in the land of our captivity. We complain that the white man is oppressing our people. We complain that we're struggling, we are poor. Everything is set up to destroy us. Everything is set against us. But the most High God says, you've got my book. Guess what? Do what it says so you can go and possess the land which the Lord, which I swear unto your fathers to give unto you. Brothers don't want to stand up and go out there. And you see it in simple things. Because yes, we go to war. You understand? But some of you use going to war as an escape for you not, as, as if we don't see that. It's, it's as if, let me put it this way. It's like you think we cannot see, although we go to camp, you see, you think we can't see that actually. You don't like the stuff that are, that's supposed to be done in the congregation. You don't like being told what to do. You think we can't see. And you are hiding behind. You console yourself with, but I go to camp. But I teach. But I read. But I do this. No, 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 no. But once the camp is done, you have to look at the man in the mirror. When correction, because we are at war, you don't really have a time to be rebellious that much. But when you are by yourself, we send you somewhere, go and do X, Y, and Z. During the execution of the task, I can tell, mm, you don't really want to do it. The most I will jack you up. The most I will make strange things take place in your sight. You know why? Because your spirit ain't right. You're not rolling in the right spirit. You understand? Read verse 33. Come on. No, that is on that. That is on that. Give me numbers 14 verse 6 now. Numbers 14 verse 6, because at this point, we refusing, Israel is refusing, is refusing to enter into to go to, to into the land of Canaan. Because they are understanding what work must be put in. We must actually put in work to take over that land, to destroy the inhabitants in that land, to take them over, to subdue them, to destroy them and kick them out. Israel don't want to do that. Watch what happens now. The spirit that is jumped on them. This is what it brings. Read verse 6. Numbers 14. The book of Numbers, chapter 14, verse 6. Read. And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephana, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. So now, this is Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephna. It says, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. Because of what Israel was saying. They were murmuring and complaining, saying they want to go back. You understand? They wanted to go back to Egypt because in Egypt, they were what? They trusted upon their oppressors. They had good positions. They had good jobs in Egypt. They were getting work. They were well paid in Egypt. Things were good. That's why they were complaining when it was time for them to put in work to go and possess the land that the Lord swore unto our fathers. That's the same thing today. Okay, go ahead. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. 
You see that Joshua and Caleb, they were the only ones that came with a positive report. The rest, they were not happy. Although they were following, but they were not happy going up there. They didn't want to go up there. They wanted to go back to Egypt. You understand? Read that again, verse 7. The book of Numbers, chapter 14, verse 7. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. It's an exceeding good land because why? Moses already told them, listen, you're going to go up there and check out the land. So they know what the land looks like. That's why, says, and it, they, that's why they were able to say with confidence, it is an exceeding good land. Go ahead. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land mm -hmm. and give it us. Really? And the land floweth with milk and honey. Okay, come on. Only rebel not ye against the Lord. Mm. Neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bred for us. Really? Their defense is departed from them, and Come the on. Lord is with us. Fear them not. You see what he's telling them? He's encouraging them. He says, fear them not. Now, this is, K this is Joshua and Caleb speaking. I want you to see the mindset of Israel after they spoke. Watch this, verse 10. Come on. But all the congregation bade stone them with stones. You see that? But all the congregation bade, they bade, this is what they said, stone them with stones. You see what they are saying? It says, kill them with stones, put them to death. That's the same thing today. You are given, you are given an inspection to do. Because some of you, that's how I test. I test some of you. I say, okay, give him that task. Give that brother that task. Let's see how he handles it. And when he, give, when he handles it, guess what happens? During the task, is he actually going to pick up the phone and see counsel right there to see, okay, this is the handle I'm, I found. How do I handle it? How do I proceed? If he doesn't do it, he's winging it. He's not the guy. He is not the guy. Some of you do that. That's, guess what? And when you get checked, or because you don't like being told what to do, you self will. This is the spirit that you wish. This is what you wish can happen to us. Meaning what? Bathe them with stones. Because if you stone the people, what happens is they die. You understand? Read that again, verse 10. The book of Numbers, chapter 14, verse 10. Read. But all the congregation bade, stone them with stones. Read. And the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. You see that? When the, uh, the, because they were about to do that. They were about to stone Joshua and Caleb. And the most high God had to show up. The Lord had to intervene. Is that the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. Watch what the most high God says. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? You see that? You see what happens when you are given counsel from leadership? You are given counsel. You see counsel, you're given the counsel, you don't apply it. This is how the most high God feels about you. When you when you make it seem like you want to follow the counsel, but you don't follow it. This is how the Lord looks at you. You're provoking him to anger. That's what you do. That's what we read in Deuteronomy chapter 17. It says, the man that acts presumptuously, that man must die. And you must put evil away from among him. You see this? When you are given counsel, and along the way you become self-willed, guess what happens next? This is how the most High God looks at you. You can pray all you want, but the most high God looks at you like this. Because guess what? You're going against the government that is setting up. So the most high God must be happy with you? No. Must we be happy with you? Hell no. Okay? Because guess what? You become a hindrance to God's movement. Read that again, verse 11. The book of Numbers, chapter 14, verse 11. Read. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will these people provoke me? Come on. And how long will it be ere they believe me? For all the signs which I have showed among them. You see that thing? For all the signs which I have shown among them. Listen, you know what, what our signs are, what our signs, the signs that we see today are? They, the, what happened in Deuteronomy, what, the, when we read Deuteronomy 28, verse 15 through 68, that's the sign. 
That's the sign, the curses that tell us who we are because we can bear witness to that. We know, we see apartheid happen, slavery happen, you understand? Oppression is happening, poverty is going on, being in the ghettos, in the Bantu stands, the reservation and all that, we are as the refuge of the earth. Guess what? All these are signs. But guess what? With all the signs, we still don't be, the most high God says, you still don't believe. You still lack faith. You still don't believe what this Bible is saying. You still don't believe the most high God. You still don't believe it. And because of that, you provoke him to anger. So how many signs are you waiting for? For you to actually, when you're given counsel, just apply the counsel, damn it. This is the, we see problems, okay, bruh, this is the problem you have. That says the Lord. That's the problem you have. That says the Lord. Guess what? Take the counsel, apply the counsel. But a lot of you, you expecting us to be following you around. I'm not doing that. I'm not following you around because you, the reason why you're here, you're supposed to know why you're here. You were supposed to understand, okay, I'm here because I want to be a benefit to my nation. Okay, if that's the case, when you're given counsel, you should not, nobody should be following you around. You should be like an end. Like it does not have a seer over or ruler. Meaning you, provide, you take the counsel, you go forth. And when you get stuck, you go back, you ask, I'm stuck. What, how must I proceed going forward? Okay, do X, Y, and Z. Did you do that previous counsel? Yes, sir, I did the counsel. Okay, this is where the problem is. Fix it, fix that, fix that. This is the solution. Okay, then you apply. You understand? Go ahead. I'll smite them with the pestilence. Mm, hold on. Wait, wait. You see what? Hold on. You see what the most high God says he does? Number one, you, 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 the Lord sets up counsel. He says, I will restore the judges as it is said. The Lord restores the judges. The Lord restoring the judges, he gives them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to teach Israel the law. So they can repent, keep the commandments, so we all can get delivered. Guess what? You, you take the counsel, but you don't apply it. The most high God gets angry. You provoke him to anger. You, 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 you hate the signs. You ignore them. Here's what happens next. The Lord says, I'm going to smite you with a pestilence. You're going to get sick. Go ahead. And disinherit them. You're not going you're not gonna to receive the inheritance, which is the kingdom of heaven. That shall be established upon this earth when the black messiah returns. Go ahead. And will make of thee a greater nation and mightier than they. You see what the Lord is the most is telling Moses, listen, step aside, let me put them to death, let me give them a plague, let me give them a disease. And when they are sick and they drop dead, I'm gonna create a new nation with you, Moses. Jump down to verse 26. The book of Numbers, chapter 14, verse 26. Go ahead. Then the Lord spake unto Moses. You know what? Read verse 24. Read verse 24. Watch this. The book of Numbers chapter 14 verse 24. Read. Right. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him. He had faith. That another spirit you talk about, he had faith in the most high. Go ahead. And hath followed me fully. Mm -hmm. Him will I bring into the land where into he went and his seed shall possess it. You see that thing? Because when you read, when you read further, you start to realize that in the next chapter, I think it's in Joshua. Caleb, guess what? He he see he, he got land, he see got land, his children were blessed because he fully followed the most high God. He wasn't wishy-washy, he wasn't double-minded. Go ahead. Now the Amalekites and the Canaanites dwelt in the valley. Tomorrow turn you and get you into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. Ray? And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Come on. How long shall I bear this? How long shall I bear with this evil congregation? You which see that? How, hold on. He says, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation? Guess what? We are we are a congregation. That's the same the same mindset that the Lord has, that's the same mindset we have. Go ahead. I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel. No, no, read that part again. Which does which do what? Which murmur against me. Which murmur against the law. Which murmur against the council. Which murmur against the commandment. Which murmur against how things are done according to the script. They hate that. 
but they yet they say they want the kingdom. Go ahead. I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, which they murmur against me. They murmur against the Lord. Read. Say unto them, as truly as I live, saith the Lord, mm. as he has spoken in mine ears, so will I do to you. Because the Lord hears everything that you say. Go ahead. Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness and all that were numbered of you, mm -hmm. according to your whole number, from 20 years old and upward, which have murmured against me. You see what he's saying? He says, your dead bodies will fall in this wilderness. You're going to drop dead. And all that were numbered of you, according to your whole number, from 20 years old and upward, which have murmured against you, they also going to die. Go ahead. Doubtless, he shall not come into the land. Mm, is, you see what he says? He says, listen, for a fact, you're not going to enter into Israel. You're not going to come into the land. You can, Listen, some of you don't understand Judges 5 verse 11. Let me show you. Give me Judges 5 verse 11. Some of you don't understand that, that scripture. I'm going to show you what it means. The book of Judges, chapter 5 verse 11. Go ahead. They that are delivered from the noise of arches in the places of drawing water. Then shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. Stop right there. It says, they shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. Because some of you think rehearsing the righteous acts only pertains to the feast day, the high holy day. No. It pertains to all the laws, including the dietary law, including the civil law, including the, 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 ceremon the, the ceremonial civil Okay, the moral laws. Okay, what else? Um, yeah, the dietary, dietary, civil, moral, and ceremonial and all that. Listen, it, when it says he has the righteous acts, it includes all those categories of law. That also means when you're given counsel, you don't follow the counsel, you are not rehearsing the righteous acts. You think when you get into the wilderness, when Christ gives you a command, you're going to do it? No, you're not going to do it. When the most High God now says, Christ says, okay, now that I've taught you, 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 the leader. You, 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 you support the leaders. You, you, the Lord set up leadership and all that. Guess what? Then the Lord will lead. Then guess what? We're going to be there with the leaders that the Lord would have chosen for himself on that day. Guess what? You don't, you cannot follow counsel now. There's no way you're going to follow it when you're in the wilderness. Some of you don't get that. Some of you, you are sick. You don't understand that, 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 that if you don't follow counsel now, you're not going to follow it in the wilderness. You are not going to follow that counsel. Counsel in the we will not do it. Some of you think it's going to be Shazam. No, it's not going to happen like that. That's why it says he has the righteous act. Goes also into what following counsel. Applying the counsel. You understand? Hmm. Okay. Don't believe what I'm saying. You don't have to believe what judging. You don't have to believe what we just read in judging. You don't have to believe it. Okay. You don't have to believe that. Uh, go back to Numbers 14. Numbers 14. Read the state here again. The book of Numbers, chapter 14, the state. Doubtless he shall not come into the land. Concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein, save Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. You see that Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. It says Caleb and Joshua, they want to enter into the land of Israel. What well, watch this. Go ahead. But your little ones, which ye said should be a prey, them will I bring in. You see that? It says, I'm going to bring the children. I'm going to bring the children in because they are what? They're going to be a prey. Go ahead. And they shall know the land which ye have despised. They sh they're going to know the land which ye have despised. When did they despise it? When they brought a negative report. When they were complaining, saying, We want to go back, Moses. That's what was going on. Okay. Now watch this. Get that in Deuteronomy 31, verse 13. Regarding the children. Deuteronomy 31, verse 13. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 31, verse 13. Come on. And that their children, which have not known anything, may mm. hear 
and learn to fear the Lord your God as long as you have lived, as long as you live in the land whither you go over Jordan to possess it. So now it says, and they are, that their children which have not known anything. What does that mean? Give me Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 39. Deuteronomy 1, verse 39. And that their children which have not known anything. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 39. Come on. Moreover, your little ones, which ye have said should be a prey, and your children, which in that day had no knowledge between good and evil. You see that? Then that's what it means when it says your children which have not known anything. It, that what it means is, is there's what which have not known, they didn't have knowledge of good and evil. That's what it means, your children which have not known anything. Read that again, verse 39. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 39. Go ahead. Moreover, your little ones, which ye have said should be a prey, and your children, which in that day had no knowledge between good and evil, they shall go in thither, and unto them will I give it, and they shall possess it. You see that? They want to possess the land of Israel because they had not knowledge of good and evil. Because remember, the children just, the children also, they were part of the deliverance. They get delivered out of Egypt. They had not known anything. They didn't know the difference between right and wrong because the parents didn't know the difference between right and wrong. But now, the most like God, guess what he's doing? He's making sure that we learn, we wake up, we remember who we are, we keep the commandments, and we teach our children right from wrong. So it's a different ball game altogether this time. Including the children. The children, they don't keep the commandments and all of that. We teach them. They don't want to follow the commandments. They also go and die when the Lord returns. So nobody going to escape. Because then they didn't know good and evil. Now they do. Because we are commanded to teach them right from wrong. The commandments of the Most High. You understand? That's what, we, that's what is going over. Go back to Numbers 14. Read verse 33 now again. The book of Numbers chapter 14 verse 31. Read. But your little ones, which ye said should be a prey, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which ye have despised. They shall know the land which ye have despised. Go ahead. But as for you, your carcasses, they shall fall in this wilderness. Mm -hmm. You see what it's telling them? It says, but as for you, your, car your bodies are going to drop dead in this wilderness. They shall fall in the wilderness. Go ahead. And your children shall wander in the wilderness 40 years and bear your whoredoms. Until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. The most High God, he made that promise and that's exactly what took place. Only Joshua and Caleb and the children, they made it into the promised land. The rest, that first generation, they were all put to death. That's what we read in verse 33. Watch this. Give me the book of Numbers 27 verse 15. Okay. The book of Numbers chapter 27 verse 15. Go ahead. Watch this. And Hold on. You know what? Be before we do that, before we do that, um, give me Numbers 11. Give me Numbers 11. Start at this one. Numbers chapter 11, verse 1. The reason why I went over this history, I went over this history to show you, brothers, that what happened in the wilderness, that what happened in the wilderness when our forefathers, they did not want to go into the land. They make it seem that they wanted to go in but there were those of our forefathers that did not want to go in and, and investigate the land. They did not want to go in and investigate um, what the land is, for, is, 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 is made of, what the people are and all that, because they did, not want, they did not want to get delivered. They did not want to enter into the promised land. They were still murmuring and complaining and remembering what Egypt offered them. You understand? So, so it is today. The spirit of some brothers is that I'm here until I get a good job. I'm here until I get a woman and I get married. And you're not going to see me no more. I'm going to go back into the world. You understand? Some of you just are biding the time. Understand? Now, what I'm showing you is what happened back then is what's happening today. Okay? You can make it appear that you're following the council, but deep down you know you really don't want to be. 
but you fooling us, you making it seem like no, you actually want to do it, but you don't want to do it. And you think we are stupid, we can't see. No, we can see. We bring out classes like these, laws will be adventure. You can repair and get your mind right. Some of you will, some of you will not do it. Okay, watch this. Now, give me numbers 11 and 1. Numbers 11, verse 1. The book of Numbers, chapter 11, verse 1. Come on. And when the people complain, it displeased the Lord. You see what happens when complaints come? When you mama and complain about what the, the scriptures say? You mama and complain about the classes? You mama and complain the class is too long? Blah, 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 blah. But in the world, you never complain that you were groovy. You never complain that you were groovy. You never complain that you were going around dealing with other women and out there. You were not complaining. But now you're complaining that the classes are too long and all. Some garbage is at the end. That's why you must examine why you're here. Because if you're complaining now, you have not seen the amount of classes that are coming in the spirit of Christ. You're going to get really annoyed there. You understand? You're not going to make it. I'm telling you right now. Read verse 1 again. The book of Numbers chapter 11, verse 1. Read. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the Lord heard it. And his anger was kindled. You see that some of you don't believe that the Lord's anger gets kindled when you complain. You don't believe that the Lord's anger gets fueled and provoked when you complain and mama when you are given instructions to do. You don't think, but you still play, you still fast, you still say shalom, you still say shalom, more than Christ bless you, but you don't believe none of it. You just re repeating it like a error. Hmm? Go ahead. And the fire of the Lord burnt among them. Come on. And consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. The most that God destroyed them, he put them to death because why? They didn't believe. Jump down now. Read verse 5 now. Watch this. No, no, verse 9. Jump down to verse 9. Watch this. The book of Numbers chapter 11, verse 9. Come on. And when the dew fell upon the camp in the night, the manna fell upon it. So because the Lord was feeding us with men, Okay, men are from heaven, heaven, angels food. We still complain. We were complaining about the garlic and the fish and the melons in verse 5 through 8. You can read that on your own. You can see the complaints that we were having. Go ahead. Then Moses heard the people weep throughout their families. Every man in the door of his tent. Hmm. And the anger of the Lord was kindled greatly. Moses also was displeased. Because you can't blame Moses. He was pissed off. Well, what the hell is going on with our people? You understand? They were complaining. The Lord was taking care of them, but they were still murmuring and complaining. Go ahead. And Moses said unto the Lord, Wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servant? Mm. And wherefore have I not found favor in thy sight? You see what Moses is asking? Is that, listen, why are you afflicting me with these people? Why are you burying me with this rebellious nation? Mm? Why are you doing this to me? Go ahead. That thou layest the burden of all these people upon me. You see what it, Moses is complaining and saying, listen, these people, they are rebellious. Why are you choosing me to deal with this? Listen, we didn't choose none of this stuff. We were put in our corner and this happened. <laughs> Go ahead. Come on. Verse 12. Watch this. Have I conceived all these people? Have I forgotten them? That mm. thou shouldst say unto me, carry them in thy bosom. Read. As a nursing father buried the sucking child. And to the land which thou swearest unto their fathers. He says, Have I, did I give birth to all these people? Did I father all these people? Yeah, he was a father of the nation more than he was. Go ahead. Whence should I have flesh to give unto all these people? Because they were complaining, saying they want flesh. They want flesh. Because so they were not content, that's the thing. That's the, they were not content with what they had. They, had the, they were covetous. They were not content. Get that in Luke 12. Real quick, Luke chapter 12. Read verse 15. Luke 12 verse 15. Listen to what Christ says here. Okay. The book of Luke chapter 12 verse 15. Go ahead. And he said unto them, Take heed and be aware of covetousness. You see that? He says, take heed and beware of covetousness. Because that is what was going on in the wilderness with our people. Go ahead. 
For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. You see that? It says, don't put, don't, don't trust upon the possessions of things that you've got. We want to lose all these things. Like it happened during the time of the Acts of the Apostles, when they were robbing our forefathers' houses, the apostles, committing them to prison, spoiling their houses, their goods, and all that. So, guess what? Don't set your affection upon these things. They are, you're going to lose all these things when the real affliction comes upon this earth. These things, you're going to lose them. So, don't hold on to this stuff. Do not hold on to none of these things. Don't be spiritually lost wife. Okay? Now, go back. Numbers 11. Okay. Um, read verse 13. The book of Numbers, chapter 11, verse 13. Go ahead. Whence should I have flesh to give unto all these people? Mm -hmm. For they weep unto me, saying, Give us flesh that we may eat. He says, Give us flesh that we may eat. So they were complaining and murmuring. They were not grateful. Uh, they were not giving praises to the Most High God for delivering them out of the hand of the Egyptians. Likewise, today, we're not giving praise to the Lord for the Most High for waking us up. Our people, they are still complaining. In Israel, that guess what? They still want more, 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 more stuff. You, you're, you're not content that the Lord has delivered you out. Have the spirit of joy. Some of you, you just grind. Some of you, you just depressing. Some of you, you want to be the center of attention. You always have to be asked, what's wrong with you? Is everything okay? Yes, everything is fine. But we can see it's not. Because why? You still, you still that simp on the inside. You don't want to let the simp go. Simp love, love to be the center of attention. Go ahead. I am not able to pay all these people alone. Right? Because it is too heavy for me. You see what he's telling the Lord? He said, listen, I'm not able to bear all these people alone because it is too heavy for me. Why is he saying this? He's saying this because why? Leadership needs to be set. Leadership structure and command and chain of command needs to be set. But for that to take place, guess what needs to happen? Brothers must study. Brothers must take the counsel. Brothers must have the desire to grow. Then you will grow. But if you don't have the desire to learn and to grow, you are not going to grow. You will become and remain that spiritual media that you is. Go ahead. If thou deal thus with me, kill me, I mm. pray. Come on. Out, out of hand. If I have found favor in thy sight, let me not see my, my wretchedness. He says, don't let me not. Listen, because Moses was up. Listen, I'm losing it. What the hell? Because he was upset. He was, he was angry because of, like, it's like, I cannot believe. The most that God has delivered you out of Egypt. You was complaining. Now you are in the wilderness. The Lord is teaching you the law. And saying, listen, we need to go and take over the land of Canaan. You're still complaining. What the hell do you want? You understand? Go ahead. Read. And the Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel, mm -hmm. whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people. You see what he's saying? Whom you know to be the elders of the people. How did Moses know? Moses understood according to Deuteronomy 1, according to Exodus 18. When he set up counsel and leadership and all that, he set up counsel knowing this brother understands the scriptures, this one not yet. This one understands counsel, this one not yet. So he was able to set up men. Likewise, the Lord is telling him, do this based on what you have taught them to see which one will be capable of handling matters. That's what the Lord is telling Moses. Go ahead. And officers over them mm -hmm. and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation. That they may stand there with thee. You see that? He says, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with thee. Watch this. Go ahead. And I will come down and talk with thee there. Mm -hmm. And I will take the spirit which is upon thee, and will put it upon them. You see what Lord, the Lord is telling Moses? He says, bring them, and when I come with a chariot in a cloud, I'm going to take some of your spirit, and I'm going to sprinkle it upon them as well. So they also can have your spirit more. Go ahead. And they will bear the burden of the people with thee. You see that? They will bear the burden of the people with you. Go ahead. That thou bear it not thyself alone. That you don't bear it yourself alone. That's why, brothers, it's important that you, you learn. It's important that you grow. We can give you the tools and all that, but your job is to apply. Your job is to build yourself up. 
You cannot be expecting me that I have to be fulfilling you. No, because if I'm doing that, I'm bathing you. If I'm doing that, I'm doing you a disservice. No, I'm not doing that. The job is to teach, is to counsel, and the adventure you apply so you can get yourself built up. So that what we're reading here can take place. So we can together work together and build a nation. Go ahead. And say that unto the people, sanctify yourselves against, the, against tomorrow, and ye shall eat flesh. For ye have wept in the ears of the Lord, saying, Who shall give us flesh to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. Hmm. Therefore the Lord will give you flesh, and ye shall eat. You see what they are saying? He says, it was because it was well with us in Egypt. No, we were eating well in Egypt, Moses. You brought us in the wilderness to kill us. Because in some scripture, in Exodus, that's what they say. You brought us out of the wilderness to kill us. You understand? That's what they say in Exodus. That they, no, no, number 14, actually. Same number, same chapter, same book. He says, you brought us into this wilderness. You brought us into the wilderness to put us to death. You cannot make this up. But that's what they were saying. But the Lord told Moses, listen, tell them, the people, ready the people tomorrow, tell them to go and sanctify themselves, and they must come tomorrow so I can deal with them. Jump down to verse 24. The book of Numbers, chapter 11, verse 24. Read. Right. And Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. Read. Right. Gathered the 70 men of the elders of the people and set them, and set them round about the tabernacle. Now they are around about the tabernacle. They are around about the tabernacle of the congregation. The most that God is coming with a cloud. Go ahead. And the Lord came down in the cloud and spake unto him and took of the spirit that was upon him and gave it unto the 70 elders. Hmm. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. You see that? When the spirit came, you see what he's saying? He says, listen, the most I put the spirit of Moses upon the brothers, you understand? It says, and it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not stop. The more, what did the most I give them? He gave them the Holy Spirit that was on Moses. The Holy Spirit that was on Moses was poured unto the 70 elders, and the most that God gave you the same of approval. You understand? That's why some of you when we teach, when I, when, when there's, 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 when I teach, I'll be saying, don't st stand right here so you can receive it. Some of you don't get it, some of you do. Lord will, some of you will begin to understand what this means. This is what we need in here. Go ahead. Ray? But there remain two of the men in the camp. Okay, that's it on there. That's it on there. That's verse 25. We read verse 25. Okay. That's it on there. That is it on there. Now, watch this. Give me Numbers 27, verse 15. Now. The book of Numbers, chapter 27, verse 15. Read. Right. And Moses spake unto the Lord, saying, Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation. He said the what? Set a man over the congregation. Because men are the leaders. In God's movement, men are the leaders. The most High God is raising men up first. So men can be in the forefront. Okay? This movement, the women will not be in the front. Go ahead. <clears throat> which may go out before them. And mm. which may go in before them. Come on. May lead them out. And which may bring them in. That the congregation of the Lord be not a sheep which have no shepherd. You see that when there's no leadership, when there's no counsel, the people fall. Why? Because the congregation will be as like a sheep with no shepherd. That's what the scriptures is saying. So that's why counsel is necessary. You don't like counsel, you cannot be here. You don't like counsel, you, I don't know why you would be wasting your time being here. Why don't you just go back to the Christian church? Because in the Christian church, they don't counsel nothing. You understand? They don't give a damn about their nation. Right? And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the Spirit, and lay thine hand upon him. You see what the Lord is saying now? He said, listen, take Joshua. Put your spirit, the Spirit of the Lord is upon him, because, he's, because remember, Joshua was always by Moses' side. 
Joshua was always with Moses. He was always there and listen. Wherever Moses went, Joshua was right there. Likewise, when you look at the story of um, the history of Elijah and Elisha, Elisha was right there with Elijah. Because Elisha wanted to learn. Joshua, likewise, he wanted to learn. That's why he was always right there with Moses all the time. That's why the most said God, 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 Moses asked the Lord, okay, choose somebody. Mo, uh, the, the, the Moses asked the most I to choose someone. You see what verse 18 he said? Read verse 18. The book of Numbers chapter 27, verse 18. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take the Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit, and lay thine hand upon him. Wait. And set him before Eliezer, the priest, and before all the congregation, and give him a charge to and give him a charge in their sight. That, and that now that's very important, right there. And he gave him a charge in their sight. He did it so that all Israel must see. It. Why did he do that? Because he knew if that did not take place, Israel was going to rebel against Joshua. That's why he did it where all Israel can see that listen, listen, the priests they are proving it, the Moses are proving it, the most High God is in agreement with it. So that all Israel may learn and they may hear, okay? Joshua is the one also. So guess what? If it wasn't done that way, guess what was going to happen? You know, Israel, Israel is rebellious, disrespectful, you understand, obnoxious, hard-headed, rebellious, disrespect. They hate law, they, they hate order. If they can say that about the Son of God, who gave you the authority to, be, um, to rule over us, what about us? What about, regular, what about regular men like us? You think they don't want to say that? Of course they're going to say that. You understand? That's why when we do things like serious promotion, we do it when, especially when we meet as a congregation, we do them things. So everybody can see, okay, that brother is a soldier now. That brother is being promoted. That brother is being reinstated to be a soldier and so on. So all Israel can see. You understand? Go ahead. And thou shalt put some of thine honor upon him. Mm. And that all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient. May be obedient unto Joshua. You see that? The because so the most high he does things in it because he understands that I've seen these people. I know them. I know how they roll. I know how they operate. You understand? Now watch this. Watch this. Because you might be thinking, um, this leadership that the, the Lord was that the Lord set up, and when He set the leadership, the rebellion of our people against the leadership is not a new thing. But setting up leadership and council is always been the problem of the Most High God from the beginning. Go back to Isaiah chapter one verse twenty six. Okay, read that. Watch this. The book of Isaiah. Chapter 1, verse 26. Go ahead. And I will restore thy judges as at the first, mm -hmm. and thy counselors as at the beginning. Wait. Right. Afterward, thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. And guess what? This restoration that we're reading here is the restoration that's happening right now. But before we get to us, I'm going to show you, because we went over the history of what happened in the past. Guess what? Let's go to during the time of the Acts of the Apostles during the time of Christ, was it anything different or did they implement the same system? Watch this. Give me the book of Matthew 4 verse 17. I want to show you something this day. Matthew chapter 4 verse 17. Read that what you got. The book of Matthew chapter 4 verse 17. Come on. From that time Jesus began to preach and to say, repent for the, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So now this is when Christ first started to teach. This was Christ's first ministry. He was 30 years of age. Get that in John 3. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. Luke. Luke 3. I think that's what I want. Yeah, Luke 3, 23. Read that. The book of Luke, chapter 3, verse 23. Go ahead. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age. Mm -hmm. He, as was supposed, the son of Joseph, 
which was the son of Heli. You see that is it Joseph, I mean, uh, uh, Jesus Christ, Christ, he was 30 years of age, he was 30 years old. So now when he began to teach his first ministry, he was 80 years of age. Okay, now go to Matthew 4 now, verse 17. Read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 17. Go ahead. From the time Jesus began to preach and to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This is Christ's first ministry, right? Go ahead, watch this. He was teaching repentance. Okay, go ahead. Read. And Jesus, walking by the sea of Galilee, for mm -hmm. two brethren, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishes. For they were fishes. So they are, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are profession, so to speak, in the world. They were fishermen, okay? That was their job in the world to survive in captivity. This is Simon Peter and Andrew, the, the, the apostle Andrew. Go ahead. And he said unto them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Now Christ is telling them, listen, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. You're going to be fishing men now. You understand? You have to go out there and teach the gospel. But before they can be fishers of men, Christ had to teach them. Christ had to raise them up. Christ had to breathe upon them the Holy Ghost, the understanding of the scriptures so that they can follow him and not be found, but to go out there and teach. You understand? Go ahead. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. You see that? They didn't make excuses. It's that they immediately left their nets and followed him. They didn't make no excuses. Okay, go ahead. Read. And going on from thence, he saw other two brethren, James, the son of Zebedee, mm -hmm. and John, his brother, in a ship with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and he called them. They, they also were fishermen. Now, they were, yeah, they were fishermen, but he said, listen, I'm going to make you fishers of men. He's also seeing James and John. Go ahead. And they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. You see what they did? Immediately, they didn't wait time. They said, wait, what? We're following that brother right there. He's got the, he's got the gospel. He's got the truth. Listen, we're, going, we're following you. We want to learn. We want to understand what you understand. So we can also go out there and be fishers of men. You see that thing? That is the mindset of our forefathers. Watch this. Give me Matthew 10 verse 1. Matthew 10 verse 1. Watch this. The book of Matthew. Chapter 10, verse 1. Read. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits mm. and cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. So what I want you men to understand, you are not learning this just for yourself. You are learning this to go out there and teach and heal Israel. Some of you, you don't think about that. You saw into emotions. You took. Some of you, you, you are women. Some of you, you are still women in the inside. You understand? You just have a, you are women, but you've got a beard. Listen, you need to drop the sim and pull and put some boots on and grow some stones and be men. It's time for that to take place. Why? Because we've got work to do. Our people, they need healing. Okay? And that's exactly what the apostles, that the disciples that were with Christ, he had to teach them. They did not just go out there and start teaching. No, they had to be raised up. They had to be taught. They had to be groomed. You understand? Watch this. Hold that. He says he gave them power against unclean spirit. What was the power he gave them? Give me the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Acts 1 and 8. This is the, the, the power he gave them. Okay, watch this. The book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Go ahead. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. You see that? So the power that he gave them, he gave them the power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost where they were able to what? To heal the sick, to raise the dead. They were able to do that thing because that's the power he gave them. Okay? But before they could receive this type of power, what did he give them? Give me John 20 verse 22. I'm going to show you what he did first. Okay? Watch this. 
John 20, verse 22. The book of John, chapter 20, verse 22. Come on. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. You see that he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. What did he breathe unto them? He breathed unto them the commandments of the Most High God. Give me Luke 24, verse 44. The book of Luke, chapter 24, Excuse me, sir. verse 44. Come on. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you. While I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Okay, come on, because he died for the 12 tribes. The things that he came to fulfill were things that were written concerning what he would do for the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead, read. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. You see what he did? He opened their understanding that they might understand the scripture. So there's a saying in the world that says, with great power comes great responsibility. What was the responsibility that they were given before they received the power? There was, it was what? Their understanding of the scriptures. They needed to understand the scriptures. They needed to understand precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. After they understood that, what did he breathe upon them? Go back to Acts 1 verse 8. This is what was given to them. Book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8. Read. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. You see that? After you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. You're going to receive the understanding of the scriptures. Then you're going to have power that comes with the power of the Holy Ghost. They had spiritual powers. That's what the apostles did. That's what the apostles had. But before they could receive that, he breathed on them. He gave them understanding of the scriptures. You understand? Now give me Matthew 10. Go back to Matthew 10. Read verse 1 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 1. Read. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits. You see that? So first, hold on. First he gave them the understanding of the scriptures. That means he taught them. He groomed them. He gave them understanding of the scriptures, the parables, the allegories, the, the dark sayings and all that. But before they could understand all that, he gave them the law. They understood the law. They understand. They understood the parables and all that. They, then they, they began to understand the parables and the dark sayings. You understand? And they had a deep mystery. But before they could understand it, they needed to understand the law and apply it and have faith. You understand? Then they received power after that. Read it again. Verse 1. The book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 1. Read and when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits, to cast them out, and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. You see that? That's the job of that's the job of the, the leaders. The job of the leaders is to help the people with their issues with the, and by using the Bible to apply the Bible to their life. That's the job of the leaders. You understand? The job of lead the leaders, the counselors, the judges, the wise men is to use the scriptures to heal the people. You understand? So that's why when I see brothers, they are murmuring and complaining, they are preaching like robots and all that when they're supposed to apply the counsel. You don't give a damn about the sick of your people. You don't give a damn about the people that are possessed with diseases and, and devils and all that. Guess what? Our job is to give them the understanding of the scriptures to repent and keep the commandments. But we cannot do that if you yourself do not want to obey and humble down to what the Bible is saying. You understand? Watch this. Keep going. Read verse 2. Now the names of the 12 apostles are these. The first, Simon, who is called Peter, mm -hmm. and Andrew, his brother. Read. James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. Those are the ones that we read in Matthew 4, verse 17. I'm giving you all the names now. Go ahead. Philip and Bartholomew. Uh -huh. Thomas and Matthew, the publican. Read. James, the son of Alphaeus, and Libius, whose surname was Thaddeus. Student, whose surname was Thaddeus, go ahead. Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. You see that? 
So these are the 12, they, these are the 12, these are the 12 apostles or disciples. Now watch this. Hold this, be coming back. Go back to Matthew 4. Okay, Matthew 4, read verse 23 now. Book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 23. Go ahead. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching mm -hmm. in the synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all men of sickness and all men of disease among the people. So was he traveling by himself? No, he wasn't traveling by himself. Remember, he just recruited the dream team. He was fishing, he was fishing men and he got those men. When the men came, he taught them and groomed them. Guess what? That's the same thing that's happening right now. You are living in prophecy. We are walking in the footsteps of the Messiah this day. You understand? We went out, we taught. Brothers came, the Lord sent them in. Now you are being groomed and taught. As we go to, to, to go to different places to teach, guess what? You also coming along to learn how this gets done how the people get healed, how we gather the nation together, how we teach the nation, how we set the nation in order. That's what Christ did. How to bring the people back to the Lord to repent and keep God's commandment. Read. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torment. Read. And those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. You see that that's the same thing that we're doing today. That's why, as the people, as the as the as as, as the men of Israel, as as we repenting, getting our minds right, our job is to learn and understand the law. Because our people, they've got ailments, they've got issues. Our job is to go into the law as the doctors of the law to teach them how they must change their life. The 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 they've got sisters say, listen. I've got problems. I've been trying to get pregnant. I cannot. Guess what? Sis? Change your diet. Drink water. Eat veggies. Stay away from meat. Be consistent. Apply this counsel. Change your diet. Apply the dietary law. Do it for more than 12 months and up. Guess what? You guess what? Your, your immune will be fine. Your pH will be balanced and all of that. Your ovaries will be all that. Guess what? That is part of what? Understanding the laws of God. You see this? That's what this is doing. That, this is what's going on. We need to understand what the most High God is saying. That the five categories of law, which four apply today because Christ fulfilled the fifth, which is the law of animal sacrifice. The others we must know in and out because that's us understanding the medication for the problems our people got. Read. And they followed him, great multitudes of people from Galilee and from Decapolis and from Jerusalem, and from Judea, and from beyond Jordan. And from beyond Jordan. That is what was going on back then. That's what's going on today. All these different places that you see mentioned here, that's the same places. That the, today is the different places that we go to teach the gospel. Because that's what Christ was doing with the disciples. That's what we're doing today. So don't think well, when we go to different places in the country to go and teach, it's all random. No, 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 no. We follow in the footsteps of our forefathers that came before us. Watch this. Now, go back to um, Matthew 10. Okay, go back to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew 10. Let's read, read verse 4 now. Read verse 5. Matthew 10 verse 5. Watch this. The book of Matthew chapter 10 verse 5. You know what? Hmm. Jump back up to Matthew 10. Read Matthew 10 verse 2. Watch this. The book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 2. Go ahead. Now the names of the 12 apostles are these. Mm -hmm. The first, Simon, who is, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother. James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. Go ahead. Okay. So these are the names of the apostles, right? Go ahead. Read. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the publican, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Libius, whose surname was, was Thaddeus. Read. Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. Now, these are the names of the apostles. Right? Watch this. You think there was no order among them? Of course there was order. Give me Mark chapter 6. Mark 6 verse 37. 
Okay, because current government must be is going to be well ordered according to the scriptures. Mark chapter six verse thirty seven. Watch this. The book of Mark chapter six verse thirty seven. He answered and said unto them, You know what? Start at verse thirty five. We're gonna read that. The book of Mark chapter six verse thirty five. Read. Really? And when the day was now fast spent, his disciples came unto him and said. This is a desert place, and now the time is far past. Really? Send them away, that they may go into the country round about, and into the villages, and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. You see what they are saying? Is that, listen, send the people away, send the multitude away that are following us, that they may go into their villages and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. He says, let them take care of themselves. This is what the disciples are saying. Watch this. Go ahead. He answered and said unto them, give ye them to eat. You see that? You feed them. You see what he's telling them? You feed the people. That's what he's saying right there. You feed the people. Go ahead. And they say unto him, shall we go and buy 200 penny worth of bread and give them to eat? Really? And he said, he said unto them, How many loaves have ye? Go and see. And when they knew, they say, Five and two fishes. He says, Five and two fishes. Go ahead. And he commanded them to make all sit down by companies upon the green grass. Now stop right there. You see when he says five and two fishes? Because remember, they, they count to what? Seven. Seven is a number of completion, meaning what? It is enough to take care of these people. That's what he's really saying. Read on. So they were sitting down on the green grass, right? Remember, this is Christ and the disciples. He's teaching them. And remember, you see, there's people also that they are interacting with. So that means they understood the ills of the people. They understood the ills of the community. They were going to the community to teach the people, and they understood what was going on. They understood what, what medicines to bring to the people to heal them of their ill. That's what is going on here. So now he's dealing with them, he's explaining to them what's going on. Watch this. Next verse. Come on. And they sat down in ranks. In what? In ranks. In what? In ranks. In what? In ranks. In ranks. In ranks. In ranks. Christ was not walking around with bumps. Christ wasn't what Christ got. Listen, the 12 disciples that walked with Christ, they were well ordered. Is that they sat down in ranks, meaning according to their rank, according to how Moses set up back then, that's exactly what they did in his life during the time of the, the apostles when they were working with Christ. Read on. By what? By hundreds and by mm. the captains of hundreds, captains of fifty. You see that thing? That is, listen, the, 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 the blueprint has not changed. From the time of Moses until the time of Christ, the blueprint did not change. So then the, those are those disciples or the apostles that was with Christ, guess what? They all had rank, they all had structure and order and chain of command. Nobody was doing whatever the hell they wanted. Okay? I just wanted to show you that. Very important thing. Now go back. Give me Matthew 10, verse 6. Matthew 10, verse 6. The book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 6. Go ahead. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You know what? Start at verse 5 so we get the context. Because now, after he gave them, them the power to heal the people of the sicknesses and all that, he said, listen, you need to go out there now and teach Israel. You, everything that you have now, go out there and teach the people. Read what you got. Matthew 10 verse 5. The book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 5. Read. Really? He's 12. Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. He says, Don't go into the way of the Gentiles. Don't go into the other nations, so to speak. But here is really twofold. He said, Don't go into the Gentiles, okay? But he says, Into any of the city of the Samaritans, enter ye not, because he had to go there first. So this goes into the Gentiles. It also goes into the Samaritans that were called Gentiles. Okay, read. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. 
Because the Samaritans goes into the northern kingdom that was kept, okay, northern kingdom of Israel. But he says, but go what? But go rather to the lordship of the house of Israel. But go rather to the lordship of the house of Israel. Because back then, the lordship of the house of Israel was the southern kingdom. Because they rejected Christ. Meaning the elders, the scribes, and the Pharisees, and the chief priests. But he says, rather, go rather to the lordship of the house of Israel, which was the southern kingdom. But today, all 12 tribes of Israel, we are the lordship of the house of Israel. Because we are all lost, scattered across the four corners of the earth. As slaves, we forgot our history, our name, where we come from, what happened to us. And guess what? Now the Lord is waking us up. Go ahead. And as he go, preach, say, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You see what? He says, teach them that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's the same thing that he taught in Matthew 4, verse 17. That's how they got hooked into the truth. Because he taught the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He was teaching them people to repent. So, they read the same way the disciples were brought into, into the fold with Christ is the same message he's telling them to go out there to teach the people to bring them in just like they were brought in. You brother see this? Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. Heal the sick. Mm -hmm. Cleanse the lepers. Really? Raise the dead. Come on. Cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. He says, freely you have received, freely give. Meaning what? You didn't pay, you didn't pay nothing to receive this. Likewise, you must give it out to free. Go out there and teach it to the nation of Israel. Watch this. And when he says go out, I'm going to show you how heavy this thing. Give me Mark 6, verse 56. Mark chapter 6, verse 56. Because during the time of Christ, guess what? They set up the order, they set up structure, they set up counselors and judges and officers and all that. To set the nation in order. Likewise, we do the same thing this day. Mark 6, verse 56. Read that. The book of Mark, chapter 6, verse 56. Go ahead. And whithersoever you entered into villages or cities or country, they laid the sick in the streets. They, and what? Sought, they laid the sick in the streets. You see what he's saying? It says, and whithersoever he entered into villages. These are the cities now. Equal Lokshin. This is Lokshin. He entered into villages or cities, okay, or country. You see that? Cities, cities. The villages goes into the rural areas. The cities, it goes into the cities also first and foremost. The big cities where Israel is, they're always in the ghettos in the cities. The villages is in the rural areas or the countries, different countries on earth where Israel is. He's even telling you how to move. We start local, we go city, then we go country. You understand? That means across the ocean. You see how we see the order here? You see the list, the steps to teach the gospel? Go ahead. They laid the sick in the streets uh -huh. and besought him that they might touch if if it were but the border of his garment. You mean the fringes? Go ahead. And as many as touched him were made whole. You see that? Because the fringes, they teach you to keep the laws of God. So that's why when we teach our people the, the dress code and all that, put fringes on, is to help them to remember all, all of God's commandments. So guess what? They bring forth healing. So that's the responsibility that is set upon the leaders. You say you want to be a leader in Israel, you must first understand how to serve. Once you understand how to serve, you begin to understand how to lead the people. Because you also understood what it means to follow instruction so you can teach others to follow. It's the same thing. Now, watch this. Give me Titus 1 verse 5. Because this is now, give me Acts 1 and 9 first. First, give me Acts 1 verse 9. The book of Acts, chapter 1 verse 9. Go ahead. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. You see that? A cloud received him out of their sight. So what's happening here? Christ went back to the Father, okay? Now, this is during the time of the Acts of the Apostles. So after Christ left, so did they stop doing the ranking system? No, that did not stop. Watch this. Give me that in Titus 1 verse 5. Titus chapter 1 verse 5. 
the book of Titus, chapter 1, verse 5. Read. For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting. That's what leaders do. Let us, leaders, their job is to set in order the things that are wanting. There's, 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 there's leadership lacking. We need, to, we need to set up leadership. There's council that is lacking. We need to set up council. There's problems in the community. We need to go down there and teach the people the laws of God. We need to organize the people. Organize them to understand how to organize using the laws of God. How to set their, their, themselves in order using the laws of God. We must guide them, show them the right example on how this gets done. So in order for that to happen, you cannot be choking at basic stuff. Because if you're choking at basic instruction, you're not going to be able to operate on a national level, on a, on a country level. You're not going to be able to operate on that level. Why? Because you're thinking small. You're just thinking, well, when are the instruction that is given to you only pertains to you and you are low and you are in love with your emotion. No, to hell with that. The job of the leaders is to set things in order that are wanted. There's lack here, there's lack here. Let's fill the need. Let's, let, let's deal with that. Let's solve the problem. You understand? Read again. Verse 5. The book of Titus, chapter 1, verse 5. Read. For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting. Read. And ordain elders in every city. You see that? As you, see what, hold on. you see what he's calling them here? He's just abbreviating. He says, set elders in every city. The elders goes into the judges. The judges, the, the, the elders goes into the wise men. You understand? That's what he's talking about. The, the elders goes into the counselors, the officers, the captains. You understand? The officers, the captains, and all that. That's what he's going into. That's the elders. Read. As I had appointed thee. As I have commanded you. Read on. Come on. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife. Is it now, blessed. hold on, now he's setting up, he's giving the criteria for what? For elders, the criteria for leaders, the criteria for saviors, the criteria for counselors and wise men. What did he say? Read that part again. The book of Titus chapter 1 verse 6. Read. Right. Any be blameless. You must be blameless. You must be keeping the laws according to Luke 1 and 5. Read. Right? The husband of one wife. You must be husband of one wife. Read. Right? Having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly. You see that thing? That means you must, the children must be what? The children must be faithful in the laws of God. They must not be accused of doing evil and demonic abominable things. They must not be unruly. Go ahead. For a bishop must be blameless. A bishop is and a leader. A bishop just is a leader. Is as a, a bishop must be blameless. Okay, come on. As a steward of God. The stewards of God goes into what? It goes into overseer. Okay, read. Not self-willed. Not self-willed. You see the criteria for leadership? You cannot be self-willed. You must be in the laws of God. Counsel must be in the forefront. Read. Not soon angry. Not soon angry. Don't have anger issues. Go ahead. Not given to wine. Don't be a drunk. Read. No striker. No punching brothers in the face, read. Not given to filthy lucre. Don't be greedy, read on. But a lover of hospitality. You must be able to accommodate others in order for you to teach and guide them, read. A lover of good men. A lover of those that keep the commandments of the Most High God, read. Sober. You must be sober-minded, read. Just. Keeping the commandment. Holy. Keeping the commandment. Temperate. Must be serious in this truth. Read. Holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught. You see that thing? Holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught. Leaders must be groomed and taught. Hold this. Give me the book of Galatians. Okay. Give me Galatians 4. Galatians chapter 4, verse 1. Watch this. The book of Galatians chapter 4, verse 1. Read. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant. Read. Though he be lord of all. 
You see what it's saying? Is that then an heir, an heir to the throne. Is that as long as he is a child, he is still young, you don't know nothing. He is as he does, he's not different from a servant because it's very no. You must first understand that you must serve. Before you can lead, you must learn how to serve. Though he be Lord of all. Go ahead, watch this, but he must be what? But is under tutors and governors. You see that? But but he is under tutors. Any under governors, meaning leaders, right? Until the time appointed of the Father. Until the time appointed of the Father. But guess what? Everyone in here is destined to be a leader. But guess what? You must be under governors, you must be under tutors until the time appointed of the Father. You must be guided, you must be groomed. That's what the Lord is saying right here. Okay. Now, um, go back to where was that? Titus 1. The book of Titus, chapter 1, verse 9. Read. Holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught, mm -hmm. that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. You see, that's the, that's the job. As a leader, you must understand your job is to what? Is you must be able with sound doctrine, which is God's laws. Give me that in Proverbs 4, verse 2. Sound doctrine. What is the sound doctrine that we must teach? Read that. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 2. The book of Proverbs chapter 4, verse 2. Read. For I give you good doctrine, forsake you not my law. So that's the doctrine. The laws of God. That is the doctrine we teach. That's the sound doctrine. Go back. Titus 1, read verse 10. The book of Titus chapter 1, verse 10. Read. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, mm. especially they of the circumcision. Especially they of the southern kingdom, that's the circumcision. It is because the reason why the leadership must be set, order must be set, command, the chain of command must be set and structure is because, it says, because there are many unruly and vain talkers, meaning unruly, rebellious, stubborn Negroes in the congregation, vain talkers run like around their mouth, deceivers, especially they of the circumcision of the southern kingdom, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Go ahead. Whose mouths must be stopped. Whose mouth must be stopped because they like to run their mouth. Read. Who subvert whole houses. They subvert whole houses, meaning what? Spiritual houses of men and women. He says they must be stopped. Go ahead. Teaching things which they ought not. Because you teach by your example. You are given counsel, you don't follow it. Guess what? That demonic spirit is going to jump on another brother. Another brother will have the same demonic spirit as you. Go ahead. For filthy lucre's sake. For what? Filthy lucre's sake. All about what? All about the chain chain. You are here because you want a job. You are here because you want some kind of a business. You are here because you want a woman. You are here because you understand? You are not here because you want to build your nation. Right? One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, the Christians are all liars. You see that? It says, even one of them said, uh, even one of their own said, the Christians are always liars, meaning they break the law. Go ahead. Evil beasts. Mm -hmm. Slow bellies. Meaning they are dumb as hell. Wait. This witness is true. Come on. Therefore, rebuke them sharply. That's why when we see a wicked Negro doing some evil stuff, we're going to rebuke you sharply. We will correct you harshly. Go ahead. That they may be sound in the faith. That you may be sound in the faith of Christ. You may be sound in keeping God's commandments. You must understand the perfect law which that comes with keeping God's law. You must understand the spirit that comes with obeying the laws of the most High God. That's what he's saying right there. Watch this. Give me the book of Hebrews 13 verse 7. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 7. Read. Remember them which have the rule over you. Mm -hmm. Who have spoken unto you the word of God. Read. Might follow, considering the end of their conversation. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, remember them which have the rule over you. Well, guess what? When you come into this truth, we have rule over you. And how do we rule over you? With the laws of God. Remember them that have power over you. How? We're using the laws of God to guide you, 
to show you what to do, what not to do, which route to take, which route not to take. Some of you, you like, you are given cancer, you say, uh, but what about this one? What about this one? Me, when you do, because some of you have spoken to you about that, you think you're clever, you think you're a genius, you think you know too much. Some of you do that. I just leave you to your own devices. You're going to destroy your own, you're, you're going to destroy your own life. You're going to destroy your own marriage. You'll destroy your own children when you get married. You're going to do that. Children, we're just going to leave you right there. You understand? And be evil as hell. And be dumb. Destroy your whole house. Why? Because you think you took less. You understand? So read that verse again, verse 7. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 7. Read. Remember them which have the rule over you. Who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. You must consider the end. He says, whose faith follow? Because what is the faith? We follow, the, we follow Christ. It says, you have spoken unto you the word of God. We didn't, when you arrived here, we didn't speak to you what we thought. We speak the word of God as it is written. Whose faith follow? He says, follow our faith. Considering the end of our conversation. Watch this. Give me that in Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, I believe. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 8. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 8. Read. Despise not the discourse of the wise. You see that the discourse does the counsel of the wise. Read. But acquaint thyself with, thy, with their proverbs. He says, acquaint yourself with their wise things. Read. For of them thou shalt learn instruction and how to serve great men with ease. You see that thing? He says, because of the, of the wise, you, the wise, the wise men, that's the counselor, that's the leaders, that's the judges. He says, because of them thou shalt learn instruction, which is God's law, and how to serve great men with ease. Meaning you're going to be easy, you, you're easily going to know how to serve men that came in this truth before you. Guess what? It's called, it's called what? It's called understanding the order. Going with the order, not going against it. Read. Miss not the discourse of the elders. The elders goes into the wise men. You understand? The judges, the counselors, read. For they also learned of their fathers. You see that thing? Chain of command, read. And of them thou shalt learn understanding, and to give answer as need required. You're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna give you answer as need required. Meaning, you need answers. You're gonna get the answers according to the scriptures. Okay, go back. Hebrews 13, read verse seven one more again. The book of Hebrews chapter thirteen verse seven. Read. Remember them which have rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow. Considering the end of their conversation. Consider the end of their conversation, meaning their wise thing. Okay, because when you, you when you consider their wise thing, here's what happens. Get that in uh, Zerah 24. No, no, Zerah chapter 18, verse 29. Zerah 18, 29. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 18, verse 29. Read. Right? They that were of understanding in sayings, became also wise themselves. You see that? Because you consider the end of the counselors, they are understanding, they are wise saying. It says, they that were of understanding in saying, they became also wise themselves. Why? Because you consider the end of their conversation. So you also can be found to be wise. Read on. And poured forth exquisite parables. Meaning you also will pour out exquisite parables because their spirit will be poured upon you. Like Moses' spirit poured upon the 70 elders and unto Joshua, Elijah, and Elisha, so on and so forth. Okay, let's go back. Hebrews chapter 13, read verse 17 now. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 17. Read. Obey them that have rule over you. No, no, read that right. Read verse 17 one more again. Excuse me, sir. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 17. Come on. Obey, the, obey them that have the rule over you. Read. And submit yourselves. Stop right there. You see that part right there? It says obey them, meaning what? Follow the counsel. You are given counsel, follow that counsel. Don't be dumb as hell. 
Okay, because those that don't follow counsel, you done. You're gonna destroy yourself. You understand? Because it says, obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourself. The problem is yourself. You don't want to submit yourself. You don't realize that the problem is you have the problem. You don't want to submit yourself to what this Bible is saying and be under governors and tutors. You don't want that. You're going against the order that the Lord has set up. You're despising Christ's government. You, because you don't want to submit yourself. Why? Because you, you believe in yourself. You trust yourself. You worship yourself. You are your own God. So you're not going to submit yourself when you come into this thing because you think you're a grown-up. That's why. Go ahead. For they which watch for your souls. No, for they watch. For they, because they watch for your souls. The job of the leadership is to watch for your souls. And a lot of the times when the counsel is given to you, it's not going to be what you want to hear. No, it's going to be what you need to hear so you can change it. Go ahead. For they watch for your souls as they must give account. You see that? Because we have to give account to the things that you do and the things that you don't do. We must give account. We are going to be held accountable for what you do and what you don't do. And if we give you bad advice or good advice, we are going to be held accountable for you. But guess what? If you don't follow the counsel, here's what's going to happen. Go ahead. That they may do it with joy and not with grief. For that is unprofitable for you. Because if you don't follow that counsel, it's unprofitable for you. Because you're the one that's going to get jacked up. You understand? That's what the Lord is saying right there. Give me that in Sarah 32 verse 17. Because if you don't follow the counsel, this is what happens. If you despise government, because I showed you um, the counsel for the leaders, you see how Moses moved? You see how Moses moved with the 70 elders? The most High God, he allowed him, he told Moses to set up counsel. He did. That's what we're doing now. And those that did not follow counsel, the most High did not reward them with good things. He rewarded them with evil things. You understand? During the time when Christ was the earth, he set up counsel. That he had counsel around him. You understand? So likewise, he taught them to also set up counsel when they go out and teach and fishes, fishers of more men to come into this truth. The apostles did the same thing. They set up leadership and they did their criteria for good leadership. You understand? So guess what? When you don't follow these, these, these magnificent and beautiful examples, here's what happens. Get that in Sarah 32 verse 17. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 32 verse 17. Wait. A sinful man will not be reproved, mm -hmm. but find an excuse according to his will. When you are corrected, you always find an excuse. Why is why the way that it is? No, the reason why this happened, the reason why this because God says you are a sinful man. You sinful. What is the sin? You despise government. You are self-willed. You are an enemy of this truth. I'm going to tell you straight up. Go ahead. A man of counsel will be considered. You see that? A man of counsel will be considered. What are they considering? They're considering the end of the conversation of the counselor. You understand? You're going to consider. You're going to think about the decision you're about to make. Did you see counsel or you're just winning it because you think you're a genius? Go ahead. But a strange and proud man is not daunted with fear. A strange and a proud man is not daunted with fear. A man that is strange and proud is one that is departed from the most high God's laws. Get that in Sarah 10, real quick. Okay, Sarah chapter 10, um, read verse 12. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 12. Go ahead. The beginning of pride is when one departed from God, mm -hmm. and his heart is turned away from his maker. You see that? That's pride. When you depart from the most high God, you pride, you're, you're proud because you think your mind is above the laws of the most high God. That's what he says. That's why in Exodus, I mean, in Numbers 14, he says, the anger of the Lord was kindled. He says, stand aside, let me kill them with the pestilence. You provoking the Lord to do that to you because you think God's counsel is, 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 is nothing. Your mind is clever. You see that? But we're not going to allow you to do that today. If you don't want to see counsel, no problem. 
you don't want to ask questions, you don't want to confirm things before you do them, you, you don't want, no problem, but you cannot be here and do that. No. You can, if you want to do whatever the hell you want, no problem, but you, that cannot take place here at Stories of Christ. Understand that. Now, go back, verse 32, read verse 18 again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 32, verse 18. Read. A man of counsel will not be, will be considered, but a strange and proud man is not daunted with fear. Read. Even when of himself he hath done without counsel. Because you yourself, you do things without counsel. So when it comes to the things that are, are pertain to your nation, you also gonna follow the same demonic and poor uh, mindset that you've got. You understand? You also not gonna find you're not gonna see you're not gonna see counsel because you always do it for your own issues. Guess what? When you're given responsibility regarding the congregation, you also gonna move in the same spirit. That will not take place. Okay, go ahead. Do nothing without advice. Read again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 32, verse 19. Do nothing without advice. So you see, that's not a suggestion. That's a command. Do nothing without advice. Read it again. Do what? Do nothing without advice. Do nothing without advice. Do nothing without advice. You do something without advice, it better not be something that pertains to the congregation. It must be something that pertains to you and your life. So that you can, you yourself, you can be get, you can be destroyed by yourself. That the ministry don't get blamed. Understand? Go ahead. And when thou hast once done, repent not. When thou hast once done, meaning when once you've done, once you followed counsel once, the most High God says, don't stop speaking for counsel. Because in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. You see that? That's the most high God is telling us that, but I want to show you something. Go ahead. Go not in a way wherein thou mayest fall. Because when you do something without advice, you are going in a way that you are going to fall. It's guaranteed. It's a fact. Read. And stumble not among the stones. And don't stumble among the stones because you're going to fall. When you stumble, you break your back on the stone. Guess what? The stone represents the, the consequence of the poor decision that you made because you did not seek advice. Go ahead. Be not confident in a plain way. Because when you do things without advice, you are confident in a plain way. Meaning what? You stupid. That's what God is saying. You are confident in a plain way because why? You simple. You simple as hell. That's why you do that stuff. Watch this. Give me the book. Um, give me the book of... Um, Give me Proverbs 19. Okay. You know what? Give me Sarah 21 verse 12. Let's just read it. Let me go into that. Okay. Sarah 21 verse 12. The book of Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 21 verse 12. Because when you go against everything that we just went over, you understand, with our forefathers, when they set up council, Christ, when he set up council, the apostles after him, they set up council, like we are doing today, like according to Isaiah 126, that the Lord says he will restore judges as of the first. When you know all that, this is the consequences of your mindset. Read. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 21, verse 12. He that is not wise will not be taught. You see that? If you're not wise, if you don't keep God's commandments, you are not going to allow yourself to be taught because the laws of God will bring change to your thinking. Because you don't want, you, because you don't want to be taught, it means you don't want change. It means you're not wise. Go ahead. But there is a wisdom which multiplies bitterness. We had a class about this. But there's wisdom which multiplies bitterness. Certain things you're not going to like. But you do them because you understand you need them. You're not, you're not, you, don't, you don't apply counsel that feels good. The counsel that doesn't feel good, that's the counsel that you must do because you know. Why does it not feel good? It means I've got the devil on it. That's how you have to look at it. Once you, really, once you find out that the things in the law that you don't like, that means something wrong with you. That means you have a situation that requires uh, some, it requires, listen, you are in a state of emergency. You need somebody to pull you out of that fire before it consumes. Go ahead. 
The knowledge of a wise man shall abound like a fool, like a flood. Read. And his counsel is like a pure fountain of life. His counsel is what? His counsel, his counsel is like the pure fountain of life, which is the laws of God. A wise man's counsel is like a pure fountain of life because he comes to the laws of God. Read. The inner parts of a fool are like a broken vessel. The inner part is your mind. Your, the mind of a fool is like a broken vessel. Read. And he, will, and, and he will hold no knowledge as long as he lives. How can you hold knowledge when your mind is broken like a vessel? Read. It needs to be restored first. Then it will hold knowledge. Read. If a skillful man hear a wise word, he will commend it and add unto it. Read. But as soon as one of no understanding heareth it, it displeaseth him, and he, and he casteth it behind his back. You see that a, fool, a foolish man, meaning a man that is a man that does do things without counsel, guess what? He cast the words of God behind his back. He despised God's commandments. Watch this. Give me that in Proverbs 19, verse 2. The book of Proverbs, chapter 19, verse 2. Why? Also, that the soul be without knowledge. Because remember, because the fool will cast the word of God behind his back, he don't apply the counsel. Guess what? That soul is without knowledge because his mind is like a broken vessel. Read. The Lord God says, that spirit is not what? Also, that the soul be without knowledge. It is not good. That soul is not good. If it's without knowledge, you are not good. You understand? That means your mind is broken, your spirit is broken. Go ahead. And he that hasteneth with his feet sinneth. Because you hate him with your feet. I give you your own feet cancer. You are chachara. You just move quick. Guess what? The Lord says you're going to find yourself in the midst of sin. That's what he's saying right there. Jump down to verse 10. The book of Proverbs chapter 19 verse 10. Read. Delight is not seemly for a fool. You see that? Delight in the laws of God. It does not seem, it is not seemly for a fool. Like you're a foolish one. The foolish man does not want to hold knowledge. Because they hate God's commandments. God's commandments multiply bitterness. So they're not going to find delight in the laws of God. Read. Much less for a servant to have rule over princes. Because this servant is a fool that he does not delight in the laws of God. He cannot rule over princes. He cannot, he cannot beat the nation of Israel. That's what he's saying. Jump down to verse 21. The book of Proverbs chapter 19 verse 21. Read. There are many devices in a man's heart. Stop right there. There are many devices in a man's heart. Because you are a fool, you don't want to keep the laws of God. You don't want to hearken unto counsel. You take the counsel, you make it seem like you're listening to the counsel. But when you are by yourself, you don't apply it. Why? Because there's many devices in your heart. There's many idols that you worship. They are the ones that are telling you what you must do. Watch this. Get that in Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9 verse 15. Start at verse 14. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 14. Go ahead. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. You see that? The devices in a man's mind is miserable thoughts. You understand? The, 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 the devices, we talk about the thoughts, you understand, that are in the, in the mind of a man that does not want to receive God's commandment. He hates God's laws. He says, we're going to have miserable thoughts. Without God's laws, we are miserable. So imagine, if you hate if you are miserable now in this truth, let me put it this way. If you are miserable in this truth, if, and you have the holy scriptures of the Lord with you, guess what? You are not in the truth. If you find yourself being miserable in this truth, everything is a barren to you when it comes to God's commandments. When it comes to you applying your, your, the laws of God for you to change, you miserable the wisdom of the Lord multiplies bitterness. In, you are not in the truth. You are still in the world. Don't deceive yourself. The thoughts of mortal men are miserable because without God's laws, we're miserable. That means you want to be without God's laws. That means you want to remain 
and stay miserable. Okay, go ahead. And our devices are but uncertain. So the many devices that are in a man's mind, the Lord says they are what they are uncertain. So that, that's the same thing that King Solomon says when he says there are many devices in a man's heart, in a man's mind. A man's mind is full of miserable thoughts and his plans are uncertain. Go ahead. For the corruptible body presses down the soul. You see that the corruptible body is this body that we've got. Our bodies are corruptible. They get sick. You understand? They are out of shape. Things are, all of that. You understand? We've got blemishes on our skin. Is because we have this corruptible body, this sinful body that is pressing down the soul. Is weighing you down because the spirit wants to do things to please the Lord. Your flesh is the enemy of your soul. You understand? Go ahead. And the earthy tabernacle will down the mind that muses upon many things. The earthy tabernacle is this body that we've got. The earthy tabernacle is the corruptible body. It weighs down the mind. It also brings down your mind. Your mind is your soul in the beginning of the verse because your mind is musing upon many things. You are thinking about a lot of stuff. That's the lust, that's the lust of the flesh. Your mind is musing upon the lust of the flesh. Go ahead. And hardly do we guess aright at things that are upon earth. We don't even, we are unable to even guess that, that we even to, we are unable to guess right the things that are upon earth. We cannot even guess the things that are upon this earth. Read. And with labor do we find the things that are before us. Mm -hmm. But the things that are in heaven, who have searched out? Only the Lord has set those things out. Okay. The Lord has set those things out. Now go back. Okay, give me Proverbs. We'll go back to Proverbs now. 19 verse 21 again. The book of Proverbs, chapter 19, verse 21. Read. Really? There are many devices in a man's heart. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. You see that it is, but however, the counsel of the Lord shall stand. If you follow the counsel, if you follow counsel, guess what? You're gonna be fine. You wanna stand. If you follow counsel, you're going to be fine. You're going to be all right, okay? Because you're using wisdom. Proverbs 29, verse 1. The book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 1. Read. He that being often reproved, hardeneth his neck. Stop right there. When you are always corrected, it's not because we're getting on you all the time because we just want to pick on you. No. The reason why you always getting corrected is because when the counsel goes out, you don't follow the counsel. When the counsel goes out, you make it seem like you're applying it. You do it one day, two days, three days. Then you say to hell with that. I'm going to go back to, to nigga mode. Then the most that God is going to want is going to turn up the heat. The Lord will jack you up. And when you come back to, when you come back for counsel, we're going to be harder on you than before. Guess what? By so doing, you're going to harden your neck because you're going to be emotional. You're not going to be objective. You're not going to be logical. You're not going to be in the spirit when the counsel goes out. Instead, you're going to think we are, we are out to get you. No, the Lord is out to destroy you. But you don't want to listen to us because you don't trust us. You don't trust the Lord. You trust what the world has taught you. So now you harden your neck. You think you do you do. You're going against us. No, you're going against yourself. You're going against the Lord. You understand? Read again verse 1. The book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 1. Read. He that being often reproved, honoreth his neck. Go ahead. Shall suddenly be destroyed. You see what happens? Suddenly. It says you are suddenly going to be destroyed because you decided to harden your neck. I give you didn't allow the laws of God to soften you up. You don't want to allow the laws of God to soften your spirit to make your heart to be soft so you can receive. You are in your neck, the Lord says, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to soften that heart. I'm going to soften your neck by destroying you suddenly. You see that? Go ahead. And that without remedy. Meaning what? There's no solution. Meaning the Bible cannot help you. You must go and lay on a white man's couch. And he gives you pills and all that to get you up. You become a, a vegetable. The choice is yours. 
You understand? The choice is yours. There's nothing else we can do when you don't want to go, when you go against this. There's nothing else none of us can do. Jump down, give me now Proverbs 15, verse 10. Proverbs 15, verse 10. The book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 10. Read. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. You see that correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. What way? The way of the law, the commandment. Read. And he that hateth reproof shall die. You will hate correction, you will die. That's plain and simple. It does. It's not, it's not a parable. Jump down to verse 32. The book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 32. Read. He that, he that refuses the instruction despises his own soul. You see that? You refuse instruction, God says you hate yourself. Let me say that again. God says when you hate instruction, you hate correction, you hate counsel, you don't apply the counsel, God says you hate yourself. Read that verse again. I want this verse to read home. Go ahead. The book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 32. Read. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul. Come on. But he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. But if you hear reproof, you get understanding. Meaning you receive the correction, you receive understanding of why you're not supposed to do that and why you're supposed to follow what the Bible says instead of what you want to follow, which is your mind. And your mind is not yours at all. You're defending something that does not even belong to you. That's crazy stuff. That shows you that your mind is sick. Okay? Watch this. I'm going to show you. I'm, I'm going to close it with this. Give me the book of 2 Samuel. Okay? No, give me 1 Samuel 30 verse 1. I'm going to show you one of the, the men that the men that was after the most of God's heart. Let's see what he did. Did he follow counsel or not? Watch this. 1 Samuel 30 verse 1. We're going to read that. Come on. First book of Samuel. Chapter 30, verse 1. Read. And it came to pass, when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day, Read. the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire. So now they burned one of the territories that we were, we were, we were over with fire. Watch this, go ahead. First book of Samuel, chapter 30, verse 2. And had taken women captives that were therein, they slew not many, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. You see what they did is that they taken the women captives that were therein, they slew not any, meaning they didn't kill anyone, neither either great or small, but they carried them away and went their way, meaning they took them captives. Okay, meaning what hostage. Go ahead. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire. And their wives, and their sons, and their daughters were taken captives. So the wives, sons, and daughters were taken captive. Okay, come on. You see, the nations have always been doing this. That's what this is, Deuteronomy 28, verse 32. Go ahead. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept. Until they had no more power to weep. You see that? They were crying because guess what? Their children, their wives and their children are taken captives. Hostages. You understand? Watch this. These are David's men. They are men. They are angry. Okay, come on. And David's two wives were taken captives. Hmm. Ahinoam, the Jezulite, the Jezulites, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. Read. Really? And David was greatly distressed. David was stressed out for obvious reasons because guess what? The wives, the children, the, the sons and daughters, they are all taken captive by our enemies. Go ahead. For the people spake of stoning him. You see that? The people wanted to put King David to death because of this. You understand? Because, listen, leadership is not, is not a game. Is serious business. Look, the men went to war with David, right? They come back. The women are taken captive. Their sons and daughters taken captive. But they were, David's wives are also taken. 
And they were there with, they were with David when they are when they came back. They were also with David. David was not somewhere else by himself. But guess what? They wanted to put him to death. They wanted to attack him out of frustration. Watch this. Go ahead. Because the soul of all the people was grieved. Mm -hmm. Every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. You see that? That's where your comfort is found. You understand? The counsel for leaders, you see where your comfort is? is that, but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. He put his trust in the most high God. Watch this. Go ahead. And David said to Abiathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. The ephod, because the ephod had a what? The ephod had a had a stone that was changing, you understand, to show different colors. The most high God will tell the priest what's going on. Go ahead. And Abiathar brought thither the ephod to David. Read. Really? And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this truth? You see what he's asking? He's seeking counsel. Shall I pursue after this truth? Meaning, shall I go to war? You understand? Go ahead. Shall I overtake them? Ray. And he answered, and he answered him, pursue. You see what the Lord said to David? He says, pursue. Go to war with them because of what he's done. Go ahead. For thou shalt surely overtake them and mm -hmm. without fail recover all. You see what he's saying? The Lord is telling David, listen, go forth. You are going to overtake them and without fail recover everything that they took. What I'm showing you is. They, King, King David, he went to the Lord to inquire of the Lord of what needs to be done of this. I'm showing you that, listen, nobody's above counsel. Understand that. That's why sometimes you come to leadership and say, listen, I have a problem with this. I'm like, listen, I'll come back to you. Why? Because certain things, the Lord is not going to make them make the available like that. We have to seek counsel. Understand that. Okay. I'm going to end the class right there. I'm going to end the class right there. Let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior. Jesus the Christ. Okay. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, to bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior, give the Christ we pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand for them. All praise to the Most High.